Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for episode three and week three of A Water Deep Dragon Heist, hosted here on Variant Rolls. I'm Eugenio Vargas, I use he, him pronouns, and I am also known as your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, DM Jazzy Hands, from the actual play podcast, The Last Refuge. Uh, welcome back. Hopefully you have joined us for the last two weeks, or maybe just one week, or maybe you skipped a week. Uh, but even if this is your first week with us, we are so happy that you're here. Let's go around real quick and introduce the rest of the winter crew crew. Uh, let's start with Allison this week. Hey, Allison, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. Um, my name is Allison. Uh, I play Annie Bell Rothkama and uh, she, her pronouns and excited to get this ball rolling. Great. And Annie is our uh, half-orc barbarian, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yep, half-orc barbarian. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's hop over to Steven. Hey, Steven. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> my pro uh, my name is Stephen Rowe. Uh, my pronouns are he him. I play Rowan Toscobble Porridge Pot. Uh, there's a hype in between Toscobble and Porridge Pot. Uh, he's a halfling, uh, although he w refers the word him, uh, and he is a bard. And his pronouns are also he him. Fantastic. Let's hop to Max. How you doing this week, Max? I'm still a little sick, but I think I'm doing oh. better on the man. Oh, I like transferred it up to Alex, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. The magic of the internet. Yeah. So I'm playing Theron, who is at the moment a healer with no spells. They... <laughs> Love that. Theron has they, them pronouns where I am he, him. And uh, this is going to be an interesting game with all my magic gone. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> Alex, how are you doing? You are uh, in a different time zone this week, eh? I am indeed. Hello from <laughs> Glasgow, Scotland there, oh, my beauty. <laughs> now we can uh, pretend that we're like the other crews that have international players. Normally it's just, uh, well, I shouldn't say international, non-North American players, because we do have some Canadians. I will just play this hey. game as if I really, really, really want a nap. Uh, so <laughs> I am Alexander Gaston. I use she, her pronouns for both me and my character, Somme, who is a tiefling rogue uh dueling uh two scimitars that never run out of spells <laughs> is that how that works <laughs> yeah uh thanks to max for giving me uh you know don't ever open up random emails because that's how you get the sickness ah uh, yeah mm. got a computer so, virus and, uh, i'm excited to to be playing for for tonight all right and last but most certainly not least hi jonathan Hi. Uh, how's it going, everybody? Um, I am Jonathan. I use he, him pronouns, and I am playing Ryoga Rocky Kvarnamaki, uh, who else uses he, him. And uh, yeah, the, along with, with Alex's, you know, these, these two are registered weapons down at the house. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Don't really have to worry good. about that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that is your crew for tonight. Uh, as any of you who have joined us in weeks past know, we are one team, the winter team of a four-party mega stream. Oh, I forgot what I'm supposed to be calling it. Oh, Borg stream. Uh, yeah. Who are all playing through Wizards of the Coast's newest published adventure, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. All four of the teams are somehow connected. The other teams play on Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday afternoon. We'll tell you more about that at the end of tonight. We've only seen a few instances of the uh, streams overlapping so far, but uh, stay tuned. Last Last week, our crew of adventurers investigated a warehouse on Candle Lane, reportedly held by the Zentarum, a powerful faction in the city of Waterdeep. Upon entering, they were attacked by a band of Kenku, despite their some of their best if, uh, efforts at diplomacy. <laughs> After a few bird person deaths, some a bit more gruesome than others, the Kenkus were dispatched, and one of the two people the party was looking for was found. Rainier Neverember, son of a previous open lord of Waterdeep, Dagult Neverember, was hiding in a black back closet that smelled strongly of vinegar and herring. After being questioned by the City Watch that arrived on the heels of the battle with the Kenku, our players continued their search for the other missing person and their original target, Fleen <laughs> Flagmar. Their search led them down into the sewers of Waterdeep, where they waded through foot-deep sewage for over an hour. After a very short run-in with a flying grapefruit with eyes, also known as a gazer, they stumbled upon a hideout or lair of some sort <laughs> hidden within the sewers. <laughs> and that is where we find ourselves now. You all have just uh, quietly snuck into a room where a Dwergar, a gray dwarf, and uh, the human that you met at the Yawning Portal earlier in the night when he decided to get into a fight with that half-orc, uh, the two of them are trying to barricade a door 
and discussing whether or not just putting furniture in front of it is going to be enough. The human seems to think that it won't be. What are you all doing? Well, uh, hey, Silme, uh, w w would you like to would you like to open this up, or do you think that I, I think I think we should just talk to him? But but you know maybe they'll be more willing to listen to you. Um, I'm I'm happy to take the lead though if you want to. So, um, are you are you sure you want to open this door? I'm not quite sure we're gonna like what's gonna be on the other side when it breaks through. Well, yeah, I mean, there's probably something trying to kill them, and you know, by extent, trying to kill us. But uh, all the more reason why we should make peace now, because that way we can deal with with whatever it is together. Whether it kills them, it's not any interest to me. Whether it kills us, it's quite important. Well, I mean, it's going to try to kill us. I don't think it's going to be successful. All right, I darling. feel like I have to ask an important question just because I know Rowan. Mm -hmm. Rowan, are you speaking quietly at this point? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Just checking. Keep the volume down. I, I'm just checking. Stage voice. Stage Fair voice. question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, we can just turn around and leave if you guys want. But, uh, I mean, we've come all this way. I mean, this is this is the most promising avenue of investigation. I mean, my curiosity does have the better of me. We still have to find mm -hmm. Floon, yeah? Yeah. I mean, where else is he going to be? These are probably the people that took him. Perhaps. I mean, my ex is already, so... <laughs> my scimitars are thirsty. All right, well, I, I guess uh, I'll try to uh, check the store, see if it's unlocked. Which door is that? The door where the two of them are, that the two of them are in? Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, you guys, you have actually already uh, cracked it open, and you—that's how you knew that the two of them were in there. So you're safe Word. there. Yep. Cool. Then, all right. Well, if we don't know them, do we sneak in or do we just go out to them? Okay. Well, I think we should just say hi. <laughs> don't we? Don't we know one of them? Isn't one of those from, yeah. from the bar? Yeah. Exactly. I don't think he's gonna like me very much. Well, we didn't like make introductions or anything, and yeah, it was kind of a sour note. But but uh, I mean, that's a connection. I mean, maybe just to humanize ourselves a little bit. Well, you know, you know what I mean, so to speak. <laughs> In the party with no humans, right? <laughs> All right, I guess for some theatrical flair, I'll just kind of swing the door open and just lean on the frame and go, "Hello, darlings." Uh, they both let out somewhat uh, unflattering yelps as they uh, quickly spin around to see who has uh, come in. The, uh, the Dwergar, uh, being a Dwergar, I suppose, uh, reacts very quickly by reaching behind him and pulling out his war pick uh, and sort of raising it threateningly as if he's ready to head towards you. But the human sort of uh, puts his hands out and he sort of gives you a once over and he goes, I know you. Yeah, hi. I just give him a wink. <laughs> I just assume that Rowan has now like pushed into the room too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably knocks me off the ledge a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like kind of slides through. Rowan. 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 Right. I was doing a thing. <laughs> um, so he sort of takes you in, and then he he tries to look behind you and see if he can find the rest of your posse out there in the hall, and and he sort of takes a deep <laughs> breath and he goes, oh, "Well, if these five are here." Uh, that's not his voice. If these five are here, there we go. Um, <laughs> and he says, what are you all doing here? Oh, you know, just following the scent of shit. <laughs> he sort of chuckles at that, but the Dwergar does not seem amused and uh, turns to him and uh, says, uh, enough, enough of this, Krentz. You know that there, we're not supposed to have anybody down here. And he sort of tightens his grip on his, his war pick. Oh, calm your little axes, baby. We're here to help, if you want it. Uh, I think uh, I think the Dwergar gets really insulted with the little comment, and he says, who are you calling little? And as he does, hey. he gets about twice as large. He just- Oh my gosh, it. that's the coolest thing I've ever seen! <laughs> <laughs> okay, first off, uh, I, w I would like to apologize on behalf of my friend. I want you to know that she, she doesn't feel that way about about people who, who you know, uh, just because she's taller, she doesn't judge. Um, it was just a slip of the tongue, I'm sure. And also, again, I just want to comment how amazing that is. <laughs> are, you, are you a wizard, or is that just... Uh, um, you know what? Hang on, because I think, I think maybe... I think maybe Krenz 
thinks this is funny too. Let's see. Oh yeah, Krentz is laughing about like I am at the moment. Like you have just really tickled him. And particularly because he very clearly like sort of enjoys seeing his Dwergar companion like uh, uncomfortable and like unsure what to do. Uh, so he's just laughing. Uh, but the Dwergar just continues to scowl but, but won't, uh, won't uh, deign to respond at this point. Okay, just okay. Grunts, well, I'm, I'm... Turns towards the human and Sort we'll of. talk later. It, it seems you have a problem behind that door, and we have a problem that is in here. We are looking for Floon Blagma, and uh, we will help you if you will help us in our journey. Um. So the human, uh, the Dwergar, like clearly doesn't care what you say, and it's just like ready to start beating people with his war pick. But the human, when you mention Floon's name, sort of, uh, he sort of is taken aback a little bit, and his eyes get a little wide, and he says, uh, he says, "Look, uh, I appreciate you keeping the uh, the big girl upstairs from uh, from uh, totally destroying me uh, earlier this evening, but uh, you really can't be down here." And uh, you certainly can't be down here asking for him. So uh, look, I appreciate what you did earlier. Uh, wasn't exactly how I wanted the night to end, but uh, you all kept me alive. So thank you for that. But uh, you gotta go. You gotta turn back around and pretend you never found this place. Why? Why? Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I said so. <laughs> and? Last time I checked, you weren't my mother or my father. So that answer doesn't really qualify. So, so many why? wrong responses in my head. Um, yes. <laughs> not going to say any that. of them. Not saying any of them. Uh, um, he says, look, uh, my buddy here is is ready to, to make sure that you all turn around. And, and I don't know how much longer I can keep him from doing that. And, and I, let me just tell you, he's the least of your worries. You don't want to, you don't want to go, you just... Your, your, your buddy Floon is, uh, you should just forget about him. Not uh -huh. going to happen. So we can either help you with a problem or we can leave you to die. So what would you like? I would like for you to please make a charisma persuasion check. Rowan can help you in Yay! his way. In his <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 22. Oh, all right. Um, <coughs> so he, uh, he says, uh, look, uh, uh, I, uh, and he, he's obviously really nervous. He keeps looking towards the Dwergar who is still quite large. Uh, and he says, uh, he says, look, uh, just, just don't tell him that I had anything to do with you. Uh, with you getting back here, all right? And he turns to the Dwergar and he says, uh, look, and he points to the to the door that they were barricading and he says, we got other problems. Just, uh, uh, we'll tell the boss that we we went out to go get stuff to keep that ooze from getting in here and and just, just let it be. And uh, the Dwergar, mm, let's see what the Dwergar does. All right. Uh, so the Dwergar sort of scowls and, tightens his grip on his war pick for a minute. And then he like sighs, looks back at the door behind him and shrinks back down to his original size. And uh, he turns to the human and he says, if the boss ever gets a word of this, I'm ratting you out first thing. And uh, the human just sort of nods and he says, uh, look, y'all better not uh, better not say a word about uh, about any of what happened here, all right? Just, just get going. Cause if you want to throw your lives away in there, that's on you. Uh, we're very discreet. He sort of looks confused and he goes, that's that's not what I recall, but okay. <laughs> I, would, I would just look over at the door guard and go, so does that shrinking and growing happen everywhere on your body? All right, time to go. And he starts pushing the door guard out of the room. <laughs> so there's a, there's an ooze in there? <laughs> what kind of, what, 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 what? <laughs> As you, as, uh, as the, so the two of them are sort of pushing out past, out the way that you all came into this room. Uh, so past Theron and Rocky and, oops, Theron and Rocky and Annie. And uh, right as you ask that, uh, Rowan, the Dwergar sort of turns around and, and grunts at you. Yeah, go open the door and find out. Okay. And, and then they turn the corner towards where the goblin is. No. Thank you. No. <laughs> it was very nice meeting you. Uh, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> 
Okay, so so everybody, uh, I think that that went just spectacular, and uh, and we're we're really on a roll now. So, so I yeah, mm -hmm. it's fun. We just sent two able-bodied people right past us into another room where an unconscious able-bodied person that you wouldn't let me kill is there. I am sure it's going to be great. We just had a very peaceful understanding with them, and also the the last able-bodied person was also asleep. And maybe they'll just walk right past them and not even notice. In any case, they're scared of whatever's in this room that we're going to beat. And there's no way they're going to want to mess with us then. I uh, I look at Rowan and maybe have to bend down a little bit. And I just say, if I get a knife in the back of this because of you, we're going to have words. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Um, and I don't actually mean words. I mean fists. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I, I really hope that that doesn't happen to you. Not Not because you're threatening me, though. I, I just, I just hope that, that doesn't happen. So, ooze. Yeah. <laughs> so, do we assume I, that this might be the passageway down to where Fluten was? Is that why he was telling us to? It certainly seemed that way, just from the way that he was talking. Um, you know that that Fluten's a lost cause. You don't want to go that way. You're best off just turning around and walking away. So it sounds like Fluten's in there, maybe dead, but there's really no way to find out until we go check. Well, there's no other door in the room, right? Other than the way we came from? So there's the one that you came from, the door that they're barricading, and there is, now that they've both cleared out, you do see another door on the far side of the room that leads uh, somewhere else. Well, that's right, that door. Yeah. What she said. Okay. Uh, does anything, anyone know anything about oozes? You don't want to touch them. <laughs> okay. Not that I'd want to touch anything called an ooze in the first place. I don't actually yeah. know anything about it, except we've <laughs> just already just walked terrible. through a river of ooze to get here, and I don't really <laughs> want to deal with any more. <laughs> that makes sense. What kind of ooze it is, I guess. There's more than one? Oh, darling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's go check that way. And it seems that they barred this door pretty well, so it'll probably be okay. Is it going to be okay? I'm going to take a glance around the bottom of the door, if I may. Uh, sure. All right. Uh, that's uh, 15 plus 2, 17. Um, so the first thing you notice when you get close to the bottom of the door is that it, you, it smells, right? And like you're kind of like a little bit nose blind at this point because you've been traipsing through the sewers for over an hour. Um, but like this is like concentrated sewage in here. Like you get the impression that this is probably a lavatory of some sort. Hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, you can't see much, though. It's pretty dark in there. Even with your dark vision, like, you don't really see anything moving, at least not at the moment. <clears throat> Let's leave them to deal with this. Let's check the other door. I don't want to go into another laboratory. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Uh, well, who would like to go first? Well, Annie seems to be rather antsy. That's fair. <laughs> now... But please, please just don't outright murder anyone who can talk. Is that like a good rule? That seems like a good like rule of thumb. Um, no, I don't make promises of that. Like, the hit. sorry. Not I'm sorry. just asking. I'm asking politely. I'm not. I'm not expecting you to promise or like give. A... I'm just ready to bash through the door. You know. Okay. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. And then we'll discuss what's behind it later. Yeah, but I'll have my axes out so I can swing at the first thing. You know, <laughs> comes through. Right, love it. You do you. I'm right behind you. So ready. <laughs> so ready. Okay, I, I guess I'm gonna... We'll, we want me to bust through the door. <laughs> or Annie to sure. bust through the door. Do, do you want me to check it first? Like, is that <laughs> <laughs> it sure doesn't seem like it. I think we're way past that. <laughs> oh, you all just be like, yeah, Annie, go for it. <laughs> so, I'll do it. Well, Audio is like ready to charge through it the first time. Yeah. <laughs> I think the logic holds that no one's going to put a bunch of traps and stuff in like the like the interior of their secret hideout. I mean, you'd put all that stuff on the outside. You don't want to like mm. mess yourself mm. up wandering around going to the bathroom or something, which is literally what this room might be. Have you ever seen Indiana Jones? No. <laughs> there was a trap you, up still. until the end. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no. All right. So, uh, Annie, are you then? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through and uh, bash down the door. All right. Go ahead and give me a strength athletics check. <laughs> Kill it. Murder the door. 
23. 23. Okay, so uh, also please now make me a dexterity acrobatics check. <laughs> No, 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 not for that. Don't worry. Oh. It wasn't it wasn't trapped. It was also wasn't locked or latched very clearly. <laughs> At least you weren't kicking in an out swinging door. Right. Gee, that's a nine. <laughs> I did have that thought. Okay, cool. So you just go and you're ready and you like bash down this door, but it opens so freely that like you barely touch it and it swings open, right? And you just overbalance and like face plant <laughs> on the side, on the other side of the door. And the door sort of, it leads into a hallway, but the hallway almost immediately turns right. So you almost like bash into the, to the wall because it's like five feet and then a wall and then the hallway turns right. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, but you know, on the upside, it wasn't trapped. I yeah, no, I stand up as quick as I can, like, no, no, yeah, no for sure. that. Yeah, no, 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 no. yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I totally pretend like I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no charisma deception, just, please, <laughs> or performance if you prefer. Laughing. I get a 24. <laughs> you are we're all obviously looking the other way. <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right, so there's a, a hallway that turns almost immediately to the right, like I said, and uh, down, maybe like 30 feet down the hallway, there's a, a set of stairs that lead upwards. Mm. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> right. Of course. Is this where we stealth? Uh, I would agree. Okay. If the DM allows uh, that's, us to. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. You all can make uh, dexterity stealth checks and just let me know who's going first. Is, uh, is Ani still going first? <laughs> well, probably not if we want to be stealthy about it. <laughs> I mean, no offense or anything, but, but uh, uh, maybe, maybe Somme can go first. I mean, is there I a can... light at the end of the hall? I don't like stealthing at all, but, you know, I do it because y'all want to, so. Yeah, well, I, and I we really appreciate it. I could definitely try with my 12. Oof. There is a there is a little bit of light coming from whatever is beyond this. Area right there. Yeah, just a little bit. All right, so uh, Seal uh, got a twelve. I got a twenty-five. Very Oof. nice, Rocky. How about you? Twenty. All right, uh, Ani. Fifteen. Sorry. Fifteen. Fifteen. Not too bad. And Rowan. Uh -oh. Thirteen. <laughs> all right. Yeah, not cool, terrible. Cool. No, 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 not at all. Uh, damn, y'all were right in the middle of that pack, though. So now I actually have to check some things. <laughs> <laughs> Max, did you roll a natural 19? Yes. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, okay, very nice. So, uh, cool. So, uh, who, Syl, are you going first? I guess. Okay, you all are qu quiet-ish going down this hallway and up these stairs. Uh, and as you get <laughs> to the top of the stairs and just sort of like get close enough that you can peek over and look into the next chamber, Syl, uh, you see Excuse me. You see some threadbare curtains hanging uh, on one wall of a long hallway, uh, in the middle of which stands a. Uh, there's so many half orcs in this adventure. <laughs> stands a muscular, this time male, uh, which is the first dude uh, half orc that we've seen. Uh, half orc in dingy robes, uh, standing with his foot on the chest of a male human with wavy red blonde hair. Yep. Uh, fire is burning around the orc's clenched fist, and uh, th his victim, who I assume you all seem to have identified at this point, uh, cries and squirms helplessly beneath him. Way more disquieting than that, though, Sill, uh, is something else that you see. You mm. see uh, just stepping down from a raised platform on the far end of the hallway, uh, a nightmare figure wearing black robes. It has huge white eyes and rubbery purple skin, and it has four tentacles encircling its inhuman mouth. And it is uh, cradling and sort of gently caressing and carrying down the stairs what looks like a disembodied brain with feet. And Super. it is walking down the stairs and sort of generally towards you all. Do I know what this thing is? You can I know, make. I know what I think this yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. You can make an intelligence nature check, I guess. <laughs> Seventeen. Uh, you have heard tell of the dreaded uh, mind flayer or illithid, yes. Ah, oh, we should have opened the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I? 
I assume everybody's behind me. I assumed that as well, yes. I was going to try and do beside her. Yeah. <laughs> you could try and squeeze beside her if you want. You two would be sort of squeezed up there and, and have to sort of navigate so that carefully. A, but yeah, I'd buy that. That's fine. Is there, so is there a moment where Theron and I look at each other in the eyes and go, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. It's okay. It's, a, it's an illithid. You're allowed. <laughs> Uh, it's an illicit at level one with nine hit points. <laughs> <laughs> but we found um, Floon, yay. Right. Yeah. It's not interested in Rocky. He's not concerned. <laughs> so as you all are sort of having this moment of abject terror and panic at each other, the illithid continues uh, down the hallway towards you all. <laughs> it gets near to the orc and uh, Floon and sets the... Um, brain with feet down on the ground um I, if we're gonna act we have to act now and i, I look back and i go oh, oh we gotta do this because Annie? It, it's Annie? now or never any smash you want me to, you want me to, oh all right <laughs> bam i charge through oh. and i say <laughs> let the pretty noble go amazing can let's I, let's I roll it two darts at oh. You absolutely can, but no one was surprised by you. <laughs> uh, so, yes, roll initiative. Where is my paper with initiative? Here we go. Uh, no. Good times. Good it's gonna times. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> All right. Is uh, there a feat you can take where you get to add, like, advantage on initiatives? Because I need to take that There's feat. not a feat. <laughs> there are several class and uh, subclass features that allow you to do that or add other bonuses to your, <laughs> to your initiative. Uh, Theron, what'd wizard. you get? I got a 15. All right. Uh, Rocky. A four. <laughs> okay. 14, 12, 10. I should have made this before, but Put I did down, didn't. man. All right, Rowan. 13. 13. Ani. 13 as well, but I have no decks, so <laughs> <laughs> we're going off of that. But All right. Well, well, I, it's actually dealer's choice, so whichever one of you wants I, to go first. I would like to go first because I would like to cast something on Annie. Great. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, fantastic. Uh, and Syl. Cut. Uh, okay, so you or Rocky, who wants to go first? You guys are amazing. Um, probably Syl. Okay, great. You can do some range something. What do you think? I'll go first this time. You go second. Uh, you go first the next time, big boy. <laughs> sure. Such a, such a generous. All right, let's see. Uh, <laughs> ooh, that's high. Little give, little take. Um, okay, and that is a... Uh, I feel like uh, the pike uh, of this group uh, with the low initiative rules. Yeah. Every time. <coughs> oh, that's crap. Okay. Good. Great. All right. <laughs> Good. All right. So, uh, the first thing to... Here's something stuck in my teeth, and it's whistling every time I talk. <laughs> is it a whistle? Sorry, you all had to witness that. Um, <coughs> all right, so the first thing to go is the brain with feet, which uh, sort of not terribly, uh, oh no, actually quite quickly. Oh, that's creepy. They're so mm. fast. <laughs> um, oh, that's good. so creepy. Uh, it uh, like scuttles over and just stands right at the, uh, at the foot, or at the top rather, of the stairs. And uh, let's see. I think it is going to blah 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 blah. Do you have to like? Do you have like a random generator that picks who you're going to attack? Uh, <laughs> yes, it's called a die. <laughs> D five. Um. All right. So it is going to. I'm going to need uh, Theron to please make an intelligence saving throw. <laughs> Does this happen to be a charm effect or no? Uh, it is not, unfortunately. Okay. Sorry, half elf. Sorry, guys. Let me let me just double check that I uh, my fear. It's an eight on the dice, so I think I'm oh. screwed. Oh dear. Yep, yep. There's uh, there's no bonus, so it's an eight. Okay. Oh, no. a strong start. All right. Uh, so you just feel a pressure on your mind, and a searing pain uh, strikes right behind your eyes. Well, that was shit. So you take uh, three points of psychic damage, but unfortunately, <laughs> what is your intelligence score? 10. Oh, goodness. 
Uh, oh. That's good. I can't, I, I could try and pick these up and show you, but uh, I rolled nine, which is good because that means that your intelligence score is not reduced to zero. <laughs> Uh, that hurt. Uh, it's not reduced to one either. It's just like I have okay. to. I have oh to meet God. or exceed the score. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it it hurt. Like it in terms of like physical damage. Like you have a bit of a headache, but like you are very shaken, sir. You are very very shaken. Get out uh, of my head, Charles. Uh-huh. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Um, then it is going to try and slash one of its creepy claws at uh, Syl, but that is only going to be a 12 to hit Syl. Does that hit you? No. Okay. All right. So that is its turn. It is now th it's Theron's turn. What are they going to do? Two. What in little? And I'm going to cast, uh, which one is my more powerful cantrip, which is all I have. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to give all it a sacred that. flame. Okay. That's a dexterity saving throw, and it gets a 12. And that's not enough, so it's All a right. day. eight. And that's eight damage on the dice. Yes. Well done. And I'm and going to... Dies. Am I able to move without getting an op attack of opportunity? Uh, you could... M uh, sure, yes, I think so. I, I think it moved over to the side where Syl was, so yeah, you're not within, uh, within melee range of it. I'm going to cower back. <laughs> yes, I feel like that is wise. Excellent. All right, uh, Rowan, you are up. Yes, I, I am going to, uh, while Annie is getting all prepped to, to run up there, I'm going to say, go Annie, this is the moment that you've waited for. Obvious bad guys, innocent in trouble, you're allowed to kill. And then I'll like, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I will cast heroism on her and yes. also give her bardic inspiration. Ah, so much. <laughs> I love it. All right. All right. So, what is that? Good. Five? No. How many temporary hit points per round? Uh, she gets three temporary hit points every round and is also immune to frightened. Great. Um, uh, Ani, remember that temp HP don't stack, so it just resets mm -hmm. it three yes. every round. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Otherwise, that spell would be super overpowered. No. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> But even even as it stands, it's a great spell. She's probably yeah, going to get up there. <laughs> yeah, that's up to 12 now, so. Yeah, absolutely. All right, fantastic round, Rowan. Uh, Ani, you are ready, raring, and a little bit healthier. What and are you raging, do? first of all. Yeah. <laughs> and so, raging, obviously, yes. Uh, and I was mainly talking to the other half orc. Um, I want to try to... Um, mm, I think the first thing I'm going to do, because I'm going to try to shove him off Floon, like just knock him off across, sure. off of Floon. Okay, so you're going to make a uh, strength athletics check contested by his. Does she get advantage because he's raging? <laughs> she yeah. does, yes, but it doesn't matter because he rolled a natural one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's going to be... Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I got so a do six. You wanna, do you wanna like shove him down to the ground, like knock him prone? Uh yeah, <laughs> trying to get him off a of floon, but like shove him down and get him off a of floon, basically. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right. So, so you shove him prone, him. so he's lying down right next to Floon at this point and sort of uh, totally stunned by how quickly things have turned for him. Does does Floon look like he's aware? Yeah, but he looks pretty he looks pretty messed up. Uh he does not look like he's in good shape. Um oh. Um, I think I'm gonna look to the others and say, somebody grab him and get him out of here! And just ready my axes to attack anybody who comes. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Rocky will say, I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> uh, before that happens, though, the uh, black-robed, purple-skinned creature with the tentacles around his mouth uh, sort of looks to you all uh, looks in your direction, it's so creepy, uh, nods at all of you, and then uh, there's a set of double doors uh, on the wall opposite those tattered tapestries, and this creature just uh, walks through those doors, not through them, he opens the doors and walks, and then closes them behind him uh, into whatever room is over there. Yes, hmm. gone. he has left. Oh, cool, that, that works. <laughs> yeah, he's not our problem right now. No. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, it now is uh, the half orc's turn, and the half orc is pretty not pleased. Uh, let's see. So uh, the half orc is going to stand up 
and then is going to uh, put his thumbs together and spread out his uh, his hands in front of him, sort of pointing generally in Ani's direction, uh, and fire is going to burst forth from his fingertips. And Ani, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. How'd that go? Uh, not bad, I actually got a natural 15. Oh, all right. I think that probably makes it. I can't imagine his DC is that high. Yep, that makes it. All right, so you will just take <laughs> you will just take half on this. So that is you're going to take six fire damage then, as you uh, sort of duck out of the way. Not quite entirely in time, but uh, you do manage to get out of the worst of the blast, uh, and you are able to lessen the damage that you take. All right, fantastic, that is, and he uh, is really quite angry uh, looking, but was too busy casting <laughs> a spell to yell out anything at you all at that point. Uh, at this point, it is Syl's turn. Cool. I would like to draw both scimitars. Mm -hmm. Is he within 30 feet of me? Can I make it to him? Uh, he is, but you also have the brain with legs in between you and him. Mm. I guess I'll go. Which you could totally get around, but it'll get an attack of opportunity unless you disengage. Nah, I'll uh, I'll go for the brain then. All right, go for the brain. Uh, with two attacks with the scimitars. Okay, first one. Uh oh. Seven. Okay, the brain is super creepy and quick and dodges out of the way. What the fuck? <laughs> Still just needed to get a little warmed up. Uh, she's she's in very close quarters. Uh, this brain is, you know, surprisingly quick for a brain. Um, and, it's uh, really gross, y'all. It's <laughs> right, really gross. right. It's, no, it's a brain. It's on a... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? <laughs> oh. Um, I don't have any bonus actions. Well, you used your bonus action to get that second yeah. attack in. Yeah. I'm just gonna gross Rocky. <laughs> Great, and in fact, it is Rocky's turn. All right, so real quick, I'm gonna be that guy. Um, so we've got uh, a, a brain creature right in front of us, and then the half orc. Those are the only two combatants in the room, right? So it seems to be the mind flayer seems to have left. Right. Okay. Um, and are we we're in kind of like a like a hallway? Are we closed off, or are we able yes. to move through? So right now you're in like that stairway hallway because you were behind where Syl and, and Theron were to start with. So the hallway is like maybe six or seven feet wide. So you could get past Syl, um, but you would be passing pretty close to the uh, to the brain with legs if you wanted to move into the room. Okay. Um, all right. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna yell out, "Everybody move!" And then uh, <laughs> I'm gonna charge through as much as I can and just straight up kick. Uh, this yes. brain creature trying to shove it uh, back. Yes! <laughs> That's awesome. Yes! yes! Please yes. take a strength athletics check and please roll well because this is amazing. I wanted to split How it. about a natural 20, my friend? Yes! <laughs> I what is your, what is your, I can look at the answer to this. What is your strength score? It is a 16. Fantastic. Mm. That's a plus three. I think that you kick the thing 15 damn feet uh, across the <laughs> Uh, we're gonna go with your strength modifier times five because that's the thing that I just decided we were doing. So really like this idea. Uh, great. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, okay. I just cheered at my hotel room. I hope that I don't get a call. <laughs> so just, just uh, the one one d four, right, for the normal attack? Yeah, just the one since, yeah, uh, okay. since we're also moving it. Right. Um, so that's five da uh, five damage total. Okay, so it's sort of squishy and gross when you connect with it, but it does uh, it does go, fl you're welcome. It goes <laughs> flying uh, and sort of like splat lands upside down uh, just past Floon, uh, mm -hmm. and it sort of scrambles to try and, and get back to its feet, but uh, that's where it is at the moment. Okay. Um, can I use my other bonus action for an attack still? Uh, yeah. With my martial arts? Okay, just making yeah. sure. Uh, okay, I'm going to charge on through. Okay. Um, and... I, I guess I'll take another kick on the way. <laughs> I'm trying to move past this, this creature. Um, so you've actually kicked it to the other side of Ani mm -hmm. and the half orc. So if you want to attack oh. the half orc, you can. Uh, but if you want to keep going past it to get to the to the brain, you can do that as well. I'm trying to get to Floon. Um, okay, great. So yeah, you can totally get to Floon. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm asking so many questions. But is the half orc no. between me and Floon? 
Uh, the half-orc is sort of next to, so like if it's you here and Floon here and the half-orc is sort of next to Floon. Okay, um, then I'll charge close to the half-orc, give another quick uh, round kick to that, and then try to pick up Floon and get out of here. <laughs> no, that's a lot, but that nope, can be next uh, turn, whatever needs to happen. Yeah, so the kick will happen this turn, and then you can grab next turn. Sure. Uh, that's a 14 versus armor class. Uh, and that's against the brain, right? Uh, that's against the half-orc. Oh, against the half-orc, I'm sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. So the half-orc, let's see. Yeah, I think the half orc is gonna see you coming and just sure. look really angry and turn to you and snap his fingers and uh, your kick sort of lands on uh, this like only visible when you hit it like shield, <laughs> this shimmering invisible until you kick it shield that is between you and the half orc. <laughs> All right, that'll happen. I'll just I'll eye him down and say. Better hope that can do that. Better hope you can do that twice, and Rocky will actually go ahead and mess up that sentence the same way I did. <laughs> Great, really good. Yes, but he'll, <laughs> but he'll go back and fix it like you did as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right, that is the end of round one. We are up to the top of the round, and it is the brain's turn. The brain is not happy about what's going on. Uh, it is going to run over to you, Rocky, because you kicked the shit out of it. Uh, and it's going to try and claw you. <laughs> that is a 23 to hit. That will hit, yes. Right. <laughs> see if I can roll something that isn't ones for damage. Okay, that's a little better. So that is plus two is seven slashing damage as it claws at you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Stone's Endurance. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> uh, and I'll block eight damage, so that'll work. Excellent. All right, so mm -hmm. uh, you just sort of fortify yourself, and it's almost like the uh, the creature's claws just scrabble against stone, but nothing <laughs> actually actually happens. But then you feel a pressure behind your eyes and a searing pain, and I need you to make an intelligence saving throw. This will go well. <laughs> I'm sure it will. I'm I'm reviewing all of your sheets and realizing that a creature that forces intelligence saves is quite the choice for this group. Well, it, it wasn't a one, but it may as well be a zero. So. Mm. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Uh, where are my D10s? There we go. <laughs> All right, so that is going to be another five points of psychic damage. Okay. And, uh, oh dear. Okay, that is, what's, uh, so I rolled 11. What's your intelligence score? <laughs> it's definitely an eight. Okay, <laughs> so your intelligence score is reduced to zero and you are stunned until you can regain at least one point of intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Rocky's my. not foreign to the situation. <laughs> <laughs> this is not new. <coughs> not new. Uh, cool. I'm going to go ahead and add the stun condition to your D&D Beyond character sheet. Maybe if I say their name enough, they'll sponsor us. Uh, <laughs> nope. With that voice. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it's no Matt Mercer voice, but uh, I'm getting there. I'm All right. Um, so that wasn't cool. You all see uh, Rocky just like reach up and grab his head and then his arms just sort of fall slack to his sides and he's just sort of standing there swaying a little bit back and forth absolutely nothing behind his eyes just sort of staring blankly at this Still point they would just yell out his name totally oh okay um, uh, okay yes all right Theron. speaking of it is your turn <gasps> oh 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 shit um mm -hmm. okay roll roll me a wisdom save cuz i want to know if this is a gong or a little ding okay great uh, this is on the uh, half orc or the brain? The brain. The brain, all right. That, oh, I don't imagine it has a good enough modifier for that. Nope, that's an eight. Eight. Okay, so nice resounding for whom the bell tolls gong goes off. There we go. And they take uh, five damage. All right. The brain is beginning to leak cerebral fluid uh, from various wounds and such. It does not look good. Uh, yeah. Cool. And then I duck. <laughs> all right. Um, all righty, Rowan, you are up next. Uh, well, I'm going to say Rocky, no! And then I'm going to, <laughs> uh, I will, I will create a minor illusion of, uh, that, that weird, uh, flying grapefruit thing with the eye stalks. I'm going to make like a big version of it 
uh, like right over top of Rocky, like it's it's down on the ground and it's covering him up and and just to kind of provide him some some concealment and cover just in case that thing is going to try to go in for the kill. Oh, very cool. Okay, I get it. Uh, great. So do this for me. Sure. Roll, percent, roll percentile for me. Of course. Fifty six. Cool. Uh, so, um, yes, that happens. You create okay. the illusion of this creature over top of Rocky. Um, something feels weird. You've cast this spell like so many times, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, you yeah. could do it in your sleep. Something felt weird this time. Okay. Uh, but you're not really sure what it was. Uh, we'll find out what it was in a moment. Okay. All right, uh, Ani, you are up. Uh, all right, so. Rocky, who was supposed to get flown out, is <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm facing off with a magical hair fork and a brain that can make us stupid. Uh -huh. yeah, You're immune to fear. You have no fear. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. I'm just trying to think that what she tried to do is to try to silence the magic user as best she can. So she is hecking with her exes at that guy. Amazing. Uh, mainly going up here. Yeah, at the half orc. Mainly okay. trying to go up here somehow to maybe damage vocal cords or something. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I don't, right. Yeah. Well. <laughs> okay. Cool. So one is first attack. Aha. Uh, that's uh well yeah that's probably gonna hit because it's a natural eighteen. Uh yes that will hit. <laughs> so and then. Uh, Where are his stats? There we go. In here. So it's going to be uh, seven damage. Okay. And he then does not feel good. Yep. Next one. Yeah. Oh, it's not, not, not bad either. Uh, it's a 20, not a natural 20, but it's a 20 to hit. That'll do. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I can use my uh, Bardic Inspiration, right? Yes. Uh, you can use it on oh. your attack roll, but not, not your the damage. damage. Okay, yeah. never mind. It's just three three damage on that one because I can't add the. Uh, okay. So three damage on that one, and uh, where do you place that one? Is so you were going for the th the voice box? Yeah. All right. Well, you go a little deeper than maybe you were planning, and just right into <laughs> that important artery, blood spurting. And I just falls. say that works too. <laughs> yeah. He on the you know he to be very clear he will not be casting any more spells. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I just, you know, run, guys. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's gone. That's dead. Sill. I think you're muted. Muted. I Thank wasn't you. muted. I was trying to make some tea so I'd stop coughing in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I'm a little shook because. My boy Rocky is down. Yeah. Uh, uh, so is the brain still up? The brain is still up, yes. And the half orc is still up. No, the, the half, half orc, orc is definitely not still up. <laughs> still up. All right. Uh, then I'm going for that damn brain again with both my sabotage. All right. So you run into the room because it got kicked very far away and uh, head over to the to the brain and slash with your first one. Natural one. <laughs> the brain can't talk, but I think it laughs at you. Uh, the second one is a 12. Uh, I do think a 12 hits, actually. Hold on. Oh, thank God. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and uh, any of my people around him? Uh, not at this point. I mean, yes, but it's rocky, so I don't think you can get your sneak off of that. Oh, come on. Rocky has no intelligence. He's big, though. <laughs> I don't, I don't right. think that's how that works. I think that's exactly how that works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's just my scimitar plus... Yep, just a D6, no bonus. One. I'm sorry, how much? One. I gave it a paper cut. <laughs> you did, in fact. It's not pleased about it. Listen, I don't have my little dice board. I'm rolling on my bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so it's Rocky's turn. Rocky is incapacitated and stunned and such. 
Um, however, right at this moment, uh, Rowan, roll me a d4 if you don't mind. Sure. Great. Three. Okay, fantastic. So, um, remember how I said that your spell felt weird? Yeah. Well, your spell, your illusion that's not supposed to like move or really do much of anything, right? Uh -huh. One of the eye stalks that you created in the illusion swivels towards the brain and uh, fires out a very familiar looking cold blue beam at the brain. Oh my gosh! I like uh, looked out at my hands, look up at it. <laughs> yeah, basically what you see <laughs> is like your, your illusion is there and it's exactly as you planned it. And then there's that weird staticky shimmer again. And uh, the eye stalk shimmers, statics out, glitches out, and then starts to move, turns, and fires this beam at the, ooh, at the brain who gets a natural one on his save. I can't say that that hurts my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it just freezes solid and sort of tips over uh, completely frozen and dispatched. Yay! Can we go now? Come on, guys! Did, did I do that? Did, um, <laughs> talk later, that thing might be back. Let's go. Come on, Rocky! As as this happens, as the, the brain with legs sort of falls over, uh, Rowan, you're like looking back and forth between your hands and the illusion and your hands and the illusion, and you see another little static moment uh -huh. And for a brief second, you see a dagger look like it's protruding out of the grapefruit's central eye. And then the whole illusion just vanishes. Okay. Okay. Are we still an initiative? Uh, we are not, in fact. You all have managed to not die, despite my apparent best efforts. Okay, I'll just run, I'll, uh, sorry. Yeah. Your mic went really quiet. Yeah, you're a little quiet all of a sudden. Hello. Oh, there you are. Uh, well, well, that just that that went really great. Let's 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 uh, grab Bloon and go, or do we want to go after whatever the heck that thing was? I, I no, don't, but I, I would like to do a little searching while we're here. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit more about uh, the room's uh, methods of egress and ingress. Uh, so you're in this long hallway. There are the double doors that the Mind Flayer went through. On the far side, all the way across the hall is that sort of raised dais, but it doesn't look like there's any doors or ways in or out there. Um, on the wall opposite the double doors, there are two big, long, tattered tapestries. And there's also one very small hallway that seems to lead into another chamber. Uh, well, uh, perhaps, darling, you should go look at Floon, make sure he's okay. It, it, yeah, it yeah, no, that's a great mind. idea. I would um, like to run over to Rocky. Okay, so Rowan runs to Floon, Sil runs to Rocky. Rowan, let's uh, let's go with you first. What are you uh, What are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna get out of Healer's kit uh -huh. and see if I can patch him up in case he is he is dying or anything. But I'm not actually really good at all of this, so it's it's <laughs> right. it's, it's 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 very much like oh. Does he have any obvious wounds? Well, then I will put bandages on them. Yeah, he looks like he could definitely use all the help he could get. So go ahead and make me a wisdom medicine check. Eight. <laughs> is that um, is that good? Is eight good? <laughs> I mean, you like, you know, put a gauze on a particularly yeah. large wound. Yeah. But you okay. like don't put pressure on it. You just sort of like lay it on top of it. Exactly. Well, that's what you're <laughs> supposed to do, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I love it so much. Uh, all right, Sil, how about you? You're headed over to Rocky. Um, can you all hear me okay? You mm -hmm. down. Yeah, you're Hello. quiet, but... Biscuits. All right, I'll just hold it right here. How's great. That? That's great. Good. Um, so I'll run over to Rocky, and I'll, I'll, um, I'll just kind of shake him. Come on, boy. Come on, Rocky. Just snap out of it for me, baby. Come on. And I'll just shake him and try my very best to try and get him back to me. It does not seem to be working. He's too I... That is a great face. Look, that's what he's doing. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> do I know so what's wrong him? Do I know what, do I, know what I can you help can him? make a wisdom medicine check, I guess. Ooh, 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 we'll find out how this goes. Or I guess I would buy an intelligence arcana check if that's better. What is better for you? My arcana is better. Okay. Um, 17. 
Uh, this is, I mean, since you knew a little bit about mind flayers and their ilk, uh, not that the brain was a mind flayer, but it is sort of of the family, uh, you realize that he is going to require either the ministrations of a uh, cleric or uh, of a not uh, of a cleric of not insignificant power, um, or just like a good while sleeping it off. Okay, it does at least look like I could possibly lead him out of this at least. I mean, maybe, but like you're gonna really have to like walk him every step of the way. Okay, I'm prepared to do that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to check uh, around the room to the other areas you were talking about. Okay, where do you want to head first, there? Um, I want to see what the throne he was on. The the squid face, Squidward. Yeah, so... <laughs> So you head up to that dais at the far end of the room. Um, it actually looks like a, it's a, considering how like uh, regal is maybe a big word, but like grand, he sort of made his exit. The illith that I mean, uh, the chair is just a small wooden chair uh, up on that dais. Any hidden compartments, any buttons? Make me a wisdom perception check or intelligence investigation. I'll buy either one. Uh, what was the first one you said? Wisdom perception or intelligence investigation? I'll go with perception. That's a Alrighty. 15 plus my perception of 2. 17. Don't notice anything up there. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The, stairs, the chair is made of stone, not wood. Okay. Uh, but that's, uh, that's about it. Nothing particularly okay. special out there. You do see um, next on the other side of the chair, not right next to it, but sort of beyond it, uh, a small little satchel. Uh, sort of beat up, old. Uh, okay. Looks like maybe it belongs to the half orc, not to the to the illithid. Yeah, I'll take a peek inside. Okay. Uh, so inside the satchel uh, is a book, a big old book, um, and there's also a uh, small little. Well, it's not too small, but like a medium sized little coffer inside of the satchel. Ooh. Uh, I'll grab the whole satchel and bring it down. Okay, great. Uh, the, the double Ani. doors you were talking about. Oh, sorry. The double doors, yes, you can head there next. Ani, what are you doing in the meantime before we head back around? We, uh, well, um, looking around at these idiots still hanging out in a room where we know an illithid <laughs> has just fled and may be back, and I'm waiting for them to come. But I think also internally she is a little bit uh, shocked at Rocky being stuck stone and statue and sure. she is about ready to just pick him up fire over the shoulder fireman lift over the shoulder yeah. and get out of there yeah totally so she's, you, they probably can everybody else can maybe sense like some agitation from her she is like focusing on the door as well to yeah. like make sure the illicit doesn't come back but like in the back totally room, like, um, Annie, totally and, get out and i get that you're antsy but this these are these are like guild tunnels there must be another exit somewhere we come back and look later, or you hurry it up because we need to get Rocky and the stupid pretty boy out of here. Okay. Wait, is Rocky, is Rocky not? not uh, is is he not just snapping out of it still? It, he's not. He's not I'll just. Snap him and I'm like, nope. We have to go. Y'all, help. Everybody, please look at Jonathan. Jonathan, please take some inspiration because this is amazing. <laughs> that is level. <laughs> All right, carry on, y'all. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm like, we gotta go. Okay, yeah. yeah I'm yeah, slapping yeah. Rocky to be like, see? No. <laughs> Ani, Ani, grab, Ani, grab Floon. I've got Rocky. We have to get back to the ladder to the crate and barrel. I'll help. I forgot oh, that's what we could... called it. It's I'll, in my notes. I'll help as much as I can. Okay, hold his toes. <laughs> if you want to look there, you've got a few more seconds, minutes, and but we're going. Yeah. I, I got a satchel. Does... Well, okay, let's go. Good, I was extra money. For another exit. Go. All right, Ani, do you have Floon? Uh, uh, yeah, I pick up Floon and do the fireman over. Okay, I, he's I like he's have... sort of semi-conscious and like sort of groaning, but he's not really like coherent. I just say, shut up, pretty boy. We're getting you out of here. <laughs> I'll I'll grab Rocky by both the hands like I always do, and I try to talk to him. All right, I, I just guide him out as best I can. Yeah, it's slow going, but you can get him to walk very slowly. Let's go, lovey. Come on, yoga. Come on. Both feet oh. now. Watch your head. Watch your head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. You're gonna break my heart. So no. good. <laughs> uh, 
cool. Okay, where are we going? Uh, I, well, I think I'm going to take the lead, and I think we're just going to try to get out of here now. Uh, I, I think we're going to try to leave. Uh, we've, we've got Floon, and, and Rocky is really hurt in some weird way. Quickest exit was up those uh, into that one cake and barrel uh, yeah, thing yeah, we yeah. pulled it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. And Annie's going to try to stop muttering things about the way to try to get Rocky to snap out of it, but she doesn't really know the way herself because nobody <laughs> does when Rocky talks. So <laughs> she's just right. mumbling. Yeah. Right. Um, so, like I said, it's real slow going with Rocky. Like, every step is labor. Yeah. Uh, but you all head, so you're heading back the way you came, trying to get back to that, um, who was, was it? it? Which one of you was it that went up and checked the- Rocky. Rocky <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but he pointed it out to all of us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we said- uh, like, Yeah, oh yeah, you all, oh yeah, you all absolutely know where it is. Yeah. Uh, all right, so you head that way. You get back to that room where the lavatory with the ooze in it or whatever was, and you can just make out coming out from underneath that door uh, this sm this right now small little puddle of like grayish muck that nope. is like sort of slowly sleep seeping out from under that door. Nope. Go forward. Anybody want to sample? That's fine, but let's keep going. Come on. Nope. No, no. no. Uh, Focused. Uh, so you. You keep going, you go down the hallway, you get back to where um I, I wanted happened. to leave I wanted to leave behind a little uh uh toll the dead on it as we flee that room. <laughs> sure. Uh well, that's a natural one again. I'm on fire tonight. Thanks. So you love uh, those days so much. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, seven damage as we right. exit. Great. <laughs> that gray ooze is gonna come get its revenge later. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so you all head out. You get to the, you get to the corner where uh, the the handcuffed goblin is, and you hear voices over there. And it's basically you can tell it's the Dwergar and the human just berating this goblin for falling asleep. Uh, but all of a sudden, uh, their voices stop. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to try to sneak forward and see if I can get an eye on him while everyone else is trying to keep things kind of contained back there. Okay, so um, Rowan sort of heads forward and turns the corner. And Rowan, as you turn the corner, it is super disorienting at first because you turn the corner and uh, you get another one of those little flashes, those little staticky flashes, and you're looking at what you know should be the chamber that the goblin's in with the little arrow slits mm -hmm. in it. But what you're actually looking at is a sewer tunnel, like one of the ones that you traveled in on the way here. Okay. I, I will I will take a second and I will look around and then I will pull out some notes and double check them to make sure that I didn't just get this wrong and I'm, uh -huh. I'm just turned around or something. And then uh -huh. I will go back and I will say, uh, well, I'm- So you get about that much out? Uh, well, I, and you turn around and behind you is sewer tunnel. Oh, okay. I guess I'm just here by myself then. <laughs> <laughs> do we do we see him like looking around like he's lost? Well, so he went around the corner to check things. So you all are sort of you can't see where he where he went around. How long would we wait until it's suspicious? Uh, until the Thursday okay, night show as he's a much. guest. <laughs> <laughs> Annie wouldn't wait that long. She'd be like, "What is taking him so long?" And she'd probably. Oh, Annie, I lost you. Oh. It's such a suspenseful moment, too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she would what? Uh, Annie would probably go around the corner because she's not very patient. Great. So after just a few moments with Floon slung over one yep. shoulder, Annie goes around and you see a very similar thing. You you know what you're expecting to see. You turn, you see Rowan there. <gasps> super confused. <laughs> Rowan, you see her as well. Rowan runs up and gives her leg a hug. And oh, I, yeah. I, thought, I thought everyone was gone. I thought I was by myself with the sewers. I'm like... Uh, there, there. Okay, let go. Okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was, I was. Didn't we I just hear? Sorry. I would just look at Sarah and go, "Can you go check on them?" Uh, sure. I, I suppose. Um, I'll move on through. If nothing else, like Rowan is being surprisingly and suspiciously quiet at this point. Uh, yeah. Like so you thing. turn the corner, Theron, and same thing happens to you. You disappear. You are there with Rowan and Annie. You turn around, and uh, the the layer hallway and uh, Sill and Rocky are not there. 
I'm gonna hey uh, walk. Uh, uh, pod, one moment. I'm gonna walk back around and see if I can just walk like so, ten feet back down. Yeah. So you turn around and walk ten feet back down the tunnel, and you just you remain in sewer tunnel. Yeah, yeah that, that, that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm like seventy five percent sure that this is like some sort of warp in space time. <laughs> Great, okay. and only if Annie like follow or still follows us, will she catch up with us. Otherwise, yeah, she'll, she'll figure it out. I think I've, I'm pretty sure after being yeah. quiet for a little bit, I would continue to guide my very large drooling friends with me. Sure, and it takes you know a moment, but you manage to round the corner and join the rest of your compatriots in some sewer tunnel. Wiping the drool just a little bit off. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's a, you're good. All right, you're still handsome. Okay, let's go. See, they made it. Did we? Yeah, we don't know where we are, and we need to get out of here fast. Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> um, Actually, if I if I might, real quick, please, um, please, you've been so wonderfully <laughs> method acting until this point. <laughs> Uh, when when Syl reaches up and sort of wipes away some of the drool that's on Rocky's yes. uh, lips, uh, she she sees him mouth the word Galena. Oh. Do I know what that means? I already gave you inspiration, so I can't give you more. But that you, was you probably do, but I'll let you know. All right, <laughs> just just message me. <laughs> <laughs> Call me, beat me. <laughs> if you want to reach me, all right. What are we doing? So you're in a tunnel. You're uh, no longer in the lair. That's a plus. Looking for an exit? Uh, the manhole looking, somewhere? I'm looking for the yellow markings that we follow uh, to get here. Yeah, give me... I'll take uh, wisdom perception from any of you who feel you would have the presence of mind to look about. Thirteen. So not rocky then? Th yeah, <laughs> co correct. All right, so Theron got a 13, Rowan? Two! Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? If you feel like you would be looking around, trying to figure out where you are and looking for things, if you have the presence of mind for that, you can make a wisdom perception roll. Sure. I mean, right. mine's shit, but I'll do it anyways. All right. 12. All right. That's a number. Is is Ani <laughs> participating? <laughs> yeah, she even used her inspiration, and it was still bad, so the highest was a 7. <laughs> This is how we die, guys. Technically, technically nine. Technically um, nine. She has a plus two. But technically. Right. Uh, Theron, though, yours was a, a 13, you said? Yeah. All right. So you do notice, you, you sort of, you go a little further afield than the rest of them. Uh, and you <laughs> head uh, about 15 feet down one direction. And you do see one of those, uh, one of those yellow symbols, the circle with the 10 spokes. Um, you see one and you sort of recognize it as one you think that you passed on the way down here, maybe. Um, just sort of its placement and its surroundings sort of spark something in your memory. So you have a vague idea of maybe where you might be. You look back down the hall and just wave them in my direction. Just if you follow the opposite, uh, does looking back down the hall trigger any memories of our hour long hours? Yeah, so you think sort of if you go the opposite way from where the the symbol seems to be indicating, you would be heading towards the, the crate and barrel. Okay. Now, the question is, so how are you going to carry Rocky up the ladder? I'll toss him. Every to to toss him? Talking. Is that what you said? <laughs> the ladder yeah. was quite a bit higher than... He doesn't need to be tossed. He doesn't need to be carried. He can do it. Just he just needs time. Okay. Yeah. He just needs time. I, I, I have about fifty feet of rope. There we go. This I'll, isn't I'll just a good bit of rope. This I'll, isn't I'll just some it, night be at the. Okay. He's gonna be okay. <laughs> just this isn't something. some night at the yawning portal. This I, I felt that in my head, and it almost happened to me. And very unpleasant. Just. Theron, I know it's unpleasant. We need to get him help. Let's get moving, please. We just need to have a plan for how we're going to get him up the ladder. Oh, well, well, let's get to the ladder. A Annie can probably carry them one at a time. The problem is that right now we have two people that need to be carried. Uh, but Annie is extremely strong. But yeah. I, I, I'm yeah. gonna see if I can find anything else in the bag, like do a do a root. Is there anything in there? Okay. So Potions there's that book. Or... 
Uh, there's that book in there and there is also, so if you open up the little coffer that's in there, the medium sized coffer that's in there, uh, you find a smattering of gold, silver and copper coins and two uh, small vials of red liquid. Oh. Oh. Um, do, I, do I know what uh, uh, these vials are? You could identify them with a quick taste and uh, cr- cross fingers that they're not poison. I'll do it. All right, great. <laughs> They're potions okay. of healing. <laughs> well, um, I believe we may have an answer for Floon. If someone wants to hold his gullet open. What? Uh, in his mouth. Do we want to use that on Floon, or do we want to save it? Uh, well, it would be much easier to not have to carry him. And he's rich. I'm sure he'd compensate us in kind. And he just has Floon's mouth open like this already. <laughs> <laughs> Get the pretty boy off me. I'm just going to whisper into his ear, you owe us, and then oh, pour it in. Pour it in. All right. So he, uh, you sort of work, right, you close his mouth, sort of work it so he swallows. Um, and he does, and many of his wounds, you can, you mean you can watch them heal and close up and stop bleeding. Uh, and his eyes sort of flutter open. Uh, and he looks about and catches uh, catches sight of you of you there and holding the empty potion bottle, and he just sort of squirms out of of Annie's arms if she'll let him go. Yeah, she. <laughs> Great, uh, and just he just throws his arms around you, Theron, and thanks you profusely. Uh, yes, uh, magnificent, uh, uh, splendid. Uh, you can walk now. Great. Uh, well. Uh, we were we were sent by Volo to collect you from your captors, uh, and uh, we are currently on the way. Are you feeling well enough to walk yourself? He he yes he says oh absolutely oh I should have known that Volo would send you after me oh I'm so happy to see you oh thank-. and he's just like clutching onto you Theron um, I'm oh, like so happy to see you all down. here. Where are we? Why does it smell so bad? It's a sewer. Uh, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I, I think Roquel's going to peek out of my hood, give a little oh, squeak at Oh, I forgot about him. Uh, I think he will, well, I think he's going to be unpleasantly surprised. Not that he's afraid of Roadkill, but he just wasn't expecting Roadkill to poke his little head out. So he goes, oh, 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 that's yours, I presume? <laughs> oh, yes, very friendly. Very now, uh, fantastic. Let's any, friend of, here. any friend of your, who are you all, by the way? I'm Theron. This is Silme. Uh, we've got Rowan and Annabelle. And uh, the big drooling one is Rocky, a very capable when he can think. Is he all right? Uh, he, he got hurt rescuing you, actually. Oh, you're all so giving and generous and most importantly here to save me. Let's go. <laughs> and I we're walking. Him. And we're walking. Yeah. <laughs> and we're walking. <laughs> I'll help Sil with, uh, with uh, Rocky. All right, great. I will provide so, moral support. <laughs> you walk for about a quarter of an hour, uh, find the ladder up to the crate and barrel. Uh, it is, <laughs> it is not, uh, what? It is not graceful, but you manage to get Rocky up the ladder uh, and into the uh, crate and barrel. And yeah, so you're in, um, you're in this, the, the cellar of this, establishment uh what it's the middle of the night what's the plan now that you're out of the sewers but still in this cellar i mean we can either sleep here or we can just break out i mean just open the door we're already in the inside uh floon sort of goes sleep here well i suppose if you think it's best you are the anybody we meet we can always say that uh you know we got never ember's friend here we rescued never ember's friend Oh, is Rainier okay? Oh, goodness. Yes, the other yeah. pretty boy's fine. Oh, you really do think he's pretty. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they say I look like him, you know. Yeah, you kind of look like brothers. It's a little suspicious, one might say. <laughs> she just glares at him a little. How very dare you, madam? No. I don't know what you're implying. No. Mm, what? Yeah. That, does, that does stand to reason. Why, why did they take you? Do, did they say anything? I think they thought I was Rainier. It's good to know that they that you all saved him as well. We'll have to have a word with him. We have to dress more differently in the future, I think. What were they asking you? Uh, that's Between a great beatings. question. <laughs> um, 
Oh, asking me about some treasure or, or hoard of, of money that, that Rainier's father apparently left somewhere. I don't know a thing about it. Really? Do I yes, believe really. Him? Do I believe him? Well, you can make a, you can make a wisdom insight check. May I? <laughs> yes. Uh, 18. You do believe him, yes. He really, that's what they were asking him, and he really doesn't know anything about it. I put my hand on his shoulder and go, I believe that they thought that you knew. But we'll we'll get you back to the yawning portal. We'll get you all cleaned up. We'll get us all oh. cleaned up. And maybe a drink. A drink sounds really nice right about now. I Indeed. think Rocky just needs some sleep. Like, we have to go. We have to do something. Well, how about we wait here just for a little while, um, just to see if he maybe snaps out of it, if we give him enough time. And we can all kind of catch our breath. Uh, and, and then we can keep moving if we have to. Do I think... From what I rolled, do I think that will work, or do I think he needs like actual help? Or he's a, a gonna, long... he needs actual help, or longer than a short amount of time. Rowan, I don't, I don't think catching our breath is gonna do anything. We have to either get him to somebody who could do something for him, or we need to get him to his bed. Uh, he needs sleep. He needs something. I don't like okay. him like this. Okay. This isn't okay. Right. Okay. Let's well, let's get him home. Um. Uh. Can, can you can you uh, get us? Try, try to get out of here, see, see if there's anybody awake upstairs. I, I, we don't even know where we are. Are we in a basement? Is that where we are? You're in a cellar, yeah. Um, yeah, Rowan, can you just, can you just watch him? Just yeah, of course. Him? Yeah. Right, I'll, I'll go to try and find a door or um, try to find the stairs to a door or something. Yeah, the cellar's not super huge. You can actually see just sort of on the far side a set of stairs that lead upwards to a door. That presumably okay. leads into the the crate and barrel. Is the door locked? Uh it doesn't appear to be. No. Is it trapped? <laughs> Discovering that the door is not trapped because it's a cellar door in a regular establishment, uh, and going through the door, presumably. Yes, just I am trying to get us out. Okay. Um, so you go in and you see that uh, it's uh, sort of a uh, homewares type shop, uh, quite dark. Uh, it seems like the shop has closed down for the, yes, the line in winter. Uh, thank you. Who is that? I'm, your color is, oh, no, I can't, also can't say your name. Dang, Nick is 480. Thank you. Um, I like the line in winter. The shop's closed. It's quite dark. There's nobody there. Uh, you do see... Uh, a door that is slightly ajar and behind it, um, and is slightly behind it is a uh, set of stairs going up yet another flight. Uh, if you wanna move around and you wanna be quiet about it, just let me know and you can make a dexterity stealth check. Um, I'm trying to think about what she would do in this instance because Alex personally wants to stealth all the time. Still, right. I think is desperately just trying to get us out and get her friends some help. Um, Screw it. Uh, I'm just going. Okay, going where? Um, I'll just yell back down. Oh. Uh, go up the stairs, cellar doors open. I'm trying to find this another way out of the building. And go towards the stairs that lead to you, the other you also You also see a front door to the establishment, I should say. Yeah, I, the front door. I want to go to the front door to get out. Great. Let's see if anybody heard you yelling at them. Yeah, sure. That is my third natural one tonight, so no, Yay! nobody heard you. <laughs> Y'all. Uh, all right, well, I mean, you all downstairs heard her, mm -hmm. but no one upstairs heard her. Uh, if I can, I'll, if I can carry Rocky, if, uh, I don't know if, how, you know, he is a little, he's bigger than any, but if I can yeah. carry him, I'll carry him. If I can't, I'll just, you know, shoulder and kind of drag him along. Sure. Um, I mean, you've got a pretty good strength, so I think at this point, uh, you know, we're we're good in that department. I think you're okay carrying him. Okay, I'll go to the front door. All right. And I will try to open it. And it is locked from the inside, but you can pretty easily unlock it from from where you are uh, and and get out. Yeah. That's all right. The What's the plan? Where are you all headed? Uh, I, I think we're going to take him to his home. Uh, his okay. his mom and uh, mom's probably home for the night, so so he can hope. get get some get some help and taken care of. Uh, and if he okay. isn't better by the morning, maybe we can, uh, you know, find a professional. Sure, sure. 
All right, so uh, you managed to do that, carrying sort of uh, carrying and, and dragging him along. Um, Floon uh, b- briefly uh, complains uh, about not going straight to take him somewhere, but quickly sort of realizes that you all came to save him, and so it's okay, I guess. Yeah, uh, I would say Annie's there's... giving him a dirty eye if he's doing any of that, and just like, you shut up. Yeah, and he does. <laughs> He does. He's a bit of a dandy, but he like recognizes that you all have been very helpful to him, so he'll shut up. Uh, All right, so you drop off Rocky, uh, then what? Um, Phil's gonna stay with Rocky. Yeah, same here. Okay, Uh, Phil and Rowan staying with Rocky, Annie and uh, Theron? uh, I guess that means I'll have to go take the pretty boy back to his other pretty friend, so. I I can do that if you're gonna complain about it the whole time. (laughs) I complain about all pretty boys. They're in, they're in as you have. I, anybody who's pretty, I complain about. So. He sort of leans over to Theron and that says, Floon leans over to Theron and says, uh, Methinks the lady doth protest too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't need Do to I protest. Hear that? She does anything. Oh, you can make a wisdom perception check. Oh, great. 17. Uh, I have to check because he rolled a 14. Let me see what his. He oh, had, we'll uh, I have a plus two. I get, actually, it's a 19 because I have a plus uh, two. All right, you hear him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. He's about to get punched. Oh, no. No, no, I think she, she comes up uh, to the floon and just says, I don't like pretty boys. They know they're pretty and they take advantage of whoever they want. So just stay out of my way and I'll get you where you need to go. All right, let's go. And I just start walking away. Uh, she doesn't like jokes, does she? He says, and uh, she walks over. On the plus side, when she's angry, we're very much less likely to get mugged, uh, captured again. This is an excellent point, actually. Should I say it again? I think we should yeah. say nothing. Okay, that feels safer. <laughs> and I guess I, we're going back to the yawning portal because um, uh, Volo said he was there. Would yeah. always be there. So. All right. So you all head that way. It takes you a little while to get up there. The streets are pretty much entirely deserted at this point, but you know, you are you cut an imposing figure, so no one really bothers you along the way. Um, you get back to the yawning portal. It is still open, but it's almost emptied out entirely at this point. It's it's late. Uh, but Volo is there. Um, all by himself at a table drinking. He looks like he's uh uh you know, hasn't slept and is pretty worried, but since there's not really anyone else in there he sees you all come in and he just jumps up and is so excited that you're there. And he runs over and gives a great big hug uh, to Floon and then sort of looks to the two of you, Annie and and Theron and and says, uh, Oh, uh, where are your friends? They, they fallen. (laughs) They fallen and we can't retrieve them. I'm just kidding. I think Annie starts rolling her eyes though. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Did you honestly expect us to finish this in one night? I mean, we did, but you're still here like you expected this to be a very quick mission. Uh, so he looks very flustered because that was a lot of things that just happened at once. Um, and he says, uh, ooh, that's some gallows humor you've got there. Uh, well, uh, no, to be honest, I didn't expect to see you right away, but I've not left the portal in days since, well, since I lost this one, and he sort of points to Floon. Since I lost this one, I, I've been so worried. I haven't really gone home very much except to wash. Uh, but I stay here in case he gets back. And, and then after I sent you all out, I thought I'd stay here just to be sure I didn't miss you when you did come back. Well, if you think my gallows humor is bad now, you should just see me in the winter. It, he sort of l- points, looks very <laughs> confused, and then just shakes his head. <laughs> well, we've done uh, what you asked us to do. and. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, yes. Nice. Yes. Uh, so he nods and looks a little sheepish, and uh, he sort of says, "Well, I, I didn't, ex- I didn't expect you to to return so soon, and I have to confess, I have but few coins left to spare." But he says before either of you could, yeah, because Annie's about to. Rip I'm going to step between them. Yep. He says, but, but, and taking a step back, and, and Floon also sort of takes a step back. He says, but never let it be said that Volo, Volo <laughs> reneges on a promise. 
uh, and he sort of thinks for a moment and he snaps his finger and he goes, ah, allow me to present something much, much more valuable. And he reaches into his little satchel at his side and holds out uh, a scroll tube. Uh, I think the two, the two of you, yeah. And he says, uh, it's the deed to a remarkable property here in Waterdeep. Uh, he says that now we'll need a magistrate to uh, witness the transfer of ownership. Uh, I'll arrange a meeting with one after you've uh, after you've inspected the estate and deemed it satisfactory, if you like. Oh yeah, we're going to be taking a look around before we sign anything. Yeah, Volo. absolutely. Of course, he says take take all the time you want uh, until shall we say high sun tomorrow. Uh, I'll arrange for uh, a magistrate to witness the, the transfer at, at High Sun uh, in, uh, at the courthouse in the castle ward. Where is this to? Uh, so he, <laughs> yes, props. Uh, so <laughs> you can see uh, it describes uh, a building in the North Ward um, known as Troll Skull Manor. <gasps> <laughs> Annie, Annie, this is very good. This is very good. This is this is more than than five hundred dragons. This is more. Not as good as gold because some people need that for a particular thing. If we sold <laughs> this for gold, we would get okay, a lot more exactly. gold. Uh, he says, "Yeah, well, you might. Uh, you know, you just um, well go have a look around and uh, don't pay any heed to uh, all the rumors of it being uh, haunted and all that. Uh, silly, of course. What? What? He says, "Oh no, no, no! I can assure you, it's not haunted." He says, "Why? Oh, I bought it in the first place." He says, "Yeah, uh, you, you would have." Yeah, he says, you remember I told you about my book, Volo's Guide to Spirits and Specters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it turns out this was a bit of a wasted investment for that. And and just think about this, Annie. If it is haunted, you get to find out what happens if you punch a ghost. <laughs> you can't punch a ghost, Theron. It has to be solid to hit. We can try. <sighs> Volo's just sort of like tennis game watching the two of you go back and forth. Why oh, is it still here? I wrap like, it up. I tuck it into one of the many sleeve pockets I have. Sure. He says, uh, great, well, I'm going to get this one home. And he sort of indicates Floon. He says, and then I'll uh, I'll speak with the Magister uh, and see if I can't set up a meeting for us tomorrow at uh, at High Sun. Good. Uh, we should probably get back to, to Rocky and uh, have Rowan look this over. He's the one who deals with the paperwork. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, um, just Floon, I don't ever want to see you again. All right, so stay out of my sight. Uh, Volo looks real confused at the hostility, but Floon just sort of like salutes and <laughs> nods and steps back. I'm glad you're okay, Floon. I'm he, sure. He I'm sure. Nods and, and gives you one more hug, Theron. I accept that one. Mm -hmm. As uh, as we're uh, as we're leaving, I'm going to pull a rather extravagant looking plague doctor mask out of my oh. pack and just and slip it on. Okay. And then, and just enough to muffle my voice. And uh -huh. I'm going to start to pray. Uh-huh. Uh, thinking, uh, and, and just inside, uh, just whispering it. Is it, it the, the treasure, this, this, the never ember treasure, is this, uh -huh. is this why I've been sent here? Please, please respond. I, I really wish to know. <laughs> I just um, want to do a nod. You can respond to this message. <laughs> <laughs> Please respond, TLS. Um, <laughs> make me a... Hmm. Make me a charisma check, please. Ah, I see. That's a 21. Um, so you don't like you don't hear a voice or anything, but sort of from the from the shadows uh, that you uh, sort of walk into as you leave the yawning portal, you feel sort of a a, a sense of uh contentment and sort of not quite peace but like something has settled into place you feel sort of at ease as you walk back outside Ooh. excellent i pull the hood off and i offer it to annie it smells rather good it's got it's packed <laughs> with uh, menthol eucalyptus a little what? bit of rose oil it, it it really helps with the smell of the of the sewers so, if... uh no i don't want your costumes all right so just keep it oh i don't even know why you wear that thing 
let's just go come on you know it'd be nice if we could find someone maybe that could help rocky out mm. instead of just getting back there and watch him sleep because it's kind of creepy honestly <laughs> i'm sure a good night's sleep will heal off and uh, in the morning i can see what i can do you sure about that i'm the one with the healing spells <laughs> okay just seemed like you were a little low back there uh, and the last Morning. of uh, the last uh, bit of the night closes around Theron and Annie bickering back and forth as they head down the road and back to uh, Rocky's house. Um, great. So you all can sort of, uh, it's a little tight, uh, but you all can sort of spend the night at Rocky's house. Uh, the next morning you all wake up and, and eagerly check on Rocky, who seems to have made a full recovery at this point. Uh-huh. Um, you've got a, a crushing headache but you know your intelligence is back to where it was your hit points are back to where it was you've all had a long rest uh that's fine um so none the worse for wear for the most part after the last night's uh last night's pretty intense uh adventures however you all did get to bed pretty late and being as there's no alarm clocks you've uh, you've awoken a little bit later than perhaps you intended, and you've got maybe one bell until high sun when you are meant to meet Volo at the courthouse uh, and the magister to uh, to witness the transfer of ownership to you all for the for the manor house. Well, late. well I don't even know if that's a problem. That's true. <laughs> I, would have, I would have handed over the scroll unless you went oh, okay. to sleep. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that, that does make okay. sense. I believe that. No, what, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a deed to a house, a deed to a house. We get a house. He didn't have any money, but we get a house. Oh, well, that's okay, I guess. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, go back to sleep. We have to go to the courthouse in the morning. Okay, well, well hopefully, hopefully Rock will be okay by then. Probably. I'm sure he will be. <sighs> and that's our flashback. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> We're so cinematic. Um, <laughs> could I have also just been like? Could I have just been like? Oh yeah, I think you're. Here. I think you're all aware of of what happened the night before. I think you all, you know, they would have gotten back and explained everything that happened. Yeah, before. yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Could I have just been like making sure Rocky was comfortable. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, sure, sure, sure. And just like holding his hands and just yeah. like. Yeah, and he's fine. And, you know, this morning he's he's fine. That would have been nice. So, you've got about a bell before high sun. Uh, well, uh, I, I suppose if I was given the paperwork to look at, uh, mm-hmm. I, I, will, I will wait until probably way later than what I should have. You know, you know I, I, I've got plenty, we've got plenty of time, and, sure. and I want to make sure that Rocky's okay, and then I'll probably try to read it as quickly as I can, like, before we have to run out the door. Okay. Um, you get a quick sense of it. Again, uh, it's uh, a deed to a place called Troll Skull Manor, a historic building in the North Ward. Um, the deed has been notarized. It looks pretty legit as, as far as you can tell. Um, it essentially grants full ownership of uh, the uh, the building and the land that it sits on to you, pursuant to all rules and regulations of the city of Waterdeep, blah, blah, blah. This is in North Ward? It is in North Ward, yes. Um... I think Annie looks a little nervous and 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 says, "Where, where exactly, you know, what like, you know, noble houses around near Troll School Manor or anything <laughs> like that, you know, just a curiosity." Uh, yeah. So let's see, Troll Skull Alley, uh, which is where Troll Skull Manor sits. Uh, is in a portion of the of the northward, and, and Ani, you would know all of this. I mean, you you maybe have never visited, but you would have heard of the place. Um, it's definitely in a place. Uh, I mean, all of the northward is uh, you know n- nice-ish, right? It's a nicer part of town. Um, this is sort of an area where uh, the upper middle class Water Davians are going to live, um, not like the nobles, right? There's no the air the aristocratic houses are not here. This is just sort of wealthy merchants and and things like that. Whew, all right. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Still the same ward. Still the same ward. So I, I don't yeah. think she's totally at ease, but no, definitely a, not a like next better. door. <laughs> yeah. But it is yeah. called Troll Skull, so at least it has a nice name for you. We'll get you set up with a punching bag and some. What's that supposed to mean, Darren? Troll Skull. It sounds rather brutish, and I'm going you know to shut up now. You know what's this thing that brutish? Nee? Do you? 
Annie, Annie, you walk into conversations with your axes drawn. <laughs> because I have to. They're in. Everybody's out to attack me because I'm big and I'm a six-foot-hole, green-skinned hair folk. I asked you how your morning was and you pulled your axes on me. <laughs> well, maybe it's because it was you, honestly. Um, Oh. Hey, hey, everybody. There's no, I know that we're all under a lot of stress right now and emotions are running high, but that's no reason to start lashing out at each other. So, so take a deep breath and, and, you know, take a walk if you need to. Now's the time. Fantastic. And he steps outside. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, three quarters of a bell at this point until uh, high noon. High oh, summer. <laughs> we should go. <laughs> Rocky, are you sure you're okay? Uh, y yeah, uh, it it's not worth wasting time right now, but I'll, I'll be okay, I think. Uh, I'll be okay. Okay. Well, uh, we'll, we'll walk with you, and we'll make sure that you're well taken care of. Maybe we can take a carriage or something, just in case you want to take it easy. Uh, I, Don't I think I can him. Walk. The first thing he needs to do is get back on the horse after he's been knocked off. The <laughs> Let's go, guys. Chop, chop. If we really want a house. In Northward. <laughs> yeah. In Northward. For, for, for a second, uh, Rocky's about to, to coalesce to get the, the carriage, but hearing Annie come through so so brashly, he's going to like, no, she's right. We've got to keep going. Let's just walk. <laughs> okay. Amazing. <laughs> all right, so you all are just walking there. You're not taking a carriage then, or or one of the uh, what are they called? Waterdeep has these super cool. I don't know if you guys read about it, but they have these like yeah. essentially double decker buses. I can't think of what they're called right now. Um, well, I guess at this point, what would we know is the quickest? Like rack and stack I mean, em. in the North Ward, like between where you guys are now and getting to the North Ward, it's <laughs> honestly probably six of one, half dozen of the other with morning tra traffic. Right by the time you actually get all the way up to the North Ward, you might as well just walk. Okay. Um, it is definitely chilly, um, which also maybe like will make it more unpleasant to walk, but also is another reason that it's probably the same, if not faster to walk, because there are just fewer um, fewer coaches, available coaches and carriages and such out in the winter. Um, so. But it's not chilly to Rocky, am I right? And I just like slap on the back. Oh. <laughs> 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 Maybe Annie, that little thing today is not the day, Annie. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So you all head up to the North Ward uh, and get there just a few minutes before uh, before high sun. You head to uh, the appointed courthouse, and uh, as you get to the door of the courthouse, um, you see, which is not uncommon to see, some members of the uh, city watch outside of the uh, courthouse doors. And as you approach, um, the guards sort of put their hands up and stop you and uh, inform you that um, it is uh, Magister Silmerhelv that is in today. And she is particular about uh, what she allows into the courthouse, into her presence when she's uh, conducting her work. And so any and all uh, magical items will need to be surrendered to the watch until you leave. And any uh, magical illusions or other effects must be dispelled before entering the courthouse. Well, I'm, I'm good. good. <laughs> I'm good. Um, and the, uh, the guard, the city watch sort of nods and, uh, there are two of them there and, and the one that's been interacting with you nods to the one behind him and the one behind him pulls out a little wand and sort of, uh, points the wand at himself and his, uh, eyes begin to sort of glow and he just does a quick glance at each of you, just checking. Um, Ani, he gets to you and, uh, he sort of pauses for a moment and asks, uh, he sort of points to something around your neck and sort of gives you a questioning look. Right, this was a gift. Um, you know what, I'll just stay out here. It's fine, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine guys. I'll just, it's a, it's just a FM. Yep, it's a gift. So I'll just, uh, yep, I'm just, I just said it and just turns around. <laughs> I think she's gonna guard the place with the city wall. <laughs> That's not suspicious. The two, I mean, the two watchmen kind of like awkward. don't care. They're I mean, they don't make any difference to them if you come in or not. But uh, uh, yeah. How about the rest of you? Well, now I'm super curious. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I have a potion that heals. It... Uh, yeah, they have. A, he's got a the the other watchman has like sort of a little satchel that he was gonna collect any of the items in, so he'll just take it and you know give you an assurance that like it'll be safe and you'll be able to get it back as soon as you all leave. Uh, I'll I'll uh I'll stay out with with Annie. The the cold air's working. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Great. <laughs> All right. So the three of you then can can head inside with uh, Rocky and Annie uh, waiting uh, outside. So the three of you head inside and uh, are led to uh, Magistrate Silmerhelve's uh, office, and uh, in you go. And Volo is there uh, waiting on you all, and. Um, the magistrate uh, behind the desk is a uh, is a dark red tiefling, dark red skinned tiefling, uh, mm. who is uh, looking a little put out at having to be here to go through this. Uh, but the uh, setness the the session is pretty brief. Um, you know, you have to sign some papers in front of her. She has to sign witnessing. It's all pretty uh, cut and dried. She's not at all interested. It all gets done, and she informs you all. Uh, that uh, she sort of waits expectantly for a moment, like clearly there's something else that's supposed to happen. And then she looks to the three of you and she says, the estate transfer tax? How much uh, gold oh. was in that satchel? Oh, that is a good question. Um, let me tell you right now. It was 16 gold, 82 silver, and 250 copper. Okay. And I still have nine gold myself, plus my starting gold. But I'll pay that, um, yes, if I can get uh, a first name on the deed. Uh, how, how, how much is, is the tax exactly? Uh, she sort of looks uh, put out even more and she says, it's 25 dragons. I can do this, okay. I, I have this, I can do this. I, I didn't share the spread the gold around from the satchel. Since no one true, <laughs> true. Really? That's so nice of you, thank you. I, that I will. I will not forget this. With the bill. Yes. <sighs> I'll handle this. This is fine. Oh, so yeah, I can pay the full twenty five. Oh. Great. So she takes uh, no the 25. Uh, she nods. She puts her seal on the deed, and uh, done and dusted. Done and dusted. Let's hold on the three of you real quick and go outside to where it is fairly chilly with Rocky and Ani. Um, the, uh, what are you two doing? <laughs> uh, I think Annie's trying to distract from anything that just happened. And so she immediately just seems like, Rocky, you know, I think I'm starting to get the way, but like, if you could just explain it a little bit more, um, you know, maybe I'll get it. Uh, so go on and just tell me all about the way, Rocky. <laughs> uh, you know, for the first, what, 10 or 15 minutes that uh -huh. we were out there, uh, he didn't say a single word sure uh he's just staring thousand yard stare uh -huh. uh, out into the nothingness yeah. um and then annie starts talking to him and uh you know at first it's not like it's getting through or anything um but she starts asking tell me about the way tell him about the way and everything and he goes the real thing annie is that the way is hard for everyone. There's no part of it that lets you get out without paying something, you know? There's, there's a lot of things from our past that the price comes up eventually. gotta be strong and he's like uh-huh so i think at first she was like over exaggerating her nods and then uh -huh. as he started talking about a uh, past and things have a cost and your past catches up she kind of gets quieter and like more self-reflective sure oh i like that actually um why don't the two of you uh while uh you are talking and about all of this rocky why don't the two of you uh make me wisdom perception checks please Sure. Money, no Emmys. Uh -huh. 13 from Rocky. 13 and 16. Okay. Um, Annie, you, uh, as Rocky's talking to you, uh, and Rocky, you're sort of absorbed in this while you're talking, so you don't notice, but um, a, uh, 
one of the clerks from the courthouse comes walking out um, and you all are still close-ish to the door. And uh, this clerk comes walking out and she sort of looks over to the two of you and like looks really confused why uh, a half orc and a Goliath are just like hanging out and chatting outside the courthouse. Uh, and she like slows down and like is not doing a very good job if she's even trying to like hide the fact that she's just watching you very confused. I look over. Uh -huh. <laughs> you need something? Uh, and she sort of no, keeps walking at that point. Yeah, that's the way. <coughs> did I do it right, Rocky? <laughs> did, I do it right? Yeah. did I did I do it right? Oh my god! Um, she, <laughs> uh, as you say that, as you say, yeah, that's the way. While she's walking away, she sort of stops, and she turns around and she looks at you again, and she looks really confused. And then she sort of shakes her head and keeps walking. Was it like <laughs> maybe sh like a recognition thing? Like, I think uh, you're someone else. Make me a wisdom insight check, let's say. Ten? Uh, she looked like she's, she, uh, uh, she was confused. She like maybe didn't hear you clearly or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yep, I did it real, real, real quick. <laughs> that was it, right? <laughs> so you do the way. Amazing. <laughs> Technically, you're right. She's on her own path. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want like a one sheet of what the way is according to Rocky, and then a one sheet of what the way is according to Annie. <laughs> That's what I want. Up side by side and see how it goes. <laughs> All right, great. So you two have this conversation of uh, about the way. And uh, as you are wrapping up, Rocky, the other three walk out of the courthouse, deed in hand, uh, all signed, transfer of ownership, all official and such. Hey, uh, we're all done. Uh, hopefully we didn't keep everybody waiting too long. No one just learned about the way from Rocky. That's good. <laughs> Someone else find their own way. That's wonderful. Uh, so what's the deal with your magic necklace? I, what? Sorry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, right is that, is, yeah, Kevin, we should go into? Sure. Is, are we going to go talk about your magic necklace? Shut up, Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan is my favorite person. He's my <laughs> spirit animal. Oh, man. I'm getting a t-shirt that says Rowan is my spirit animal. <laughs> Very your Patrice. Right. Uh, yeah, yes, or both. Let's go. Sure. Let's. Keep you know dirty. what we should do? We should go check out this place. Let's go check out this place. Let's go. Nothing else. Let's go. Where is it? Gonna walk off towards? Yeah, but here's the thing. Annie's all excited about distracting and going to visit this place, but this place is in the North Ward. Yeah. <laughs> <Double -edged sword. laughs> She's like nervous and excited, like trying to distract her. <laughs> like, no, oh. do you, do you want to talk? Wood. Do you want to talk about it someplace privately? Yeah, th that sounds like a good idea. This, this sounds like it's obviously something very personal to you, As and, you know and I want you to be comfortable. Yeah. Uh, eh. uh. Have we leveled up yet? <laughs> <laughs> this is the moment where we leveled up, right? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. I'm. Hey, a Annie, if you don't want to talk about it, you can just say you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I don't want to talk about it, Rowan. Maybe you ever think of that, you know? Some people well, like their secrets. I did just now, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why I asked. But next time, you can just tell me. Just, you know, your voice is really loud now, and you're drawing a lot of attention to us, so if you want to talk about this, we can do this somewhere else, but not here, okay? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was loud again. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, so were you. <laughs> right, but she thinks she's being quieter than no, Rowan. I, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Okay. Also, I sort of imagine, like, are you where are you headed? Are you all headed to Troll Skull or are you going somewhere else? Yeah. Okay. Troll Skull. Yeah. So I sort of, again, like, much like last night with Theron and Annie, like, I imagine this sort of happening as you're walking down the, <laughs> the road towards, uh, towards. Troll skull towards the north ward. You're in the castle ward, so you you definitely do. The two of you like draw a few glances as you're walking down the street, arguing. Uh, or dis <laughs> Annie, disgusting. Annie just stops talking to Rowan as soon as like <laughs> realizing we're drawing all this much attention, and then she's like, I "Don't have my cloak with me. Ro Why don't Rowan? I have my cloak with me?" G great. Rowan is very surreptitiously trying to get like a better look at the necklace, like trying to kind of just sneak it's around. Like <laughs> yeah, you can like maybe be part of a chain, but like 
Uh, <laughs> there's also like several feet. Yeah, oh yeah, oh. Just and, <laughs> it's just he's 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 he not not, not unobvious about it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Uh. <laughs> all right, so you all head to uh, Troskal Alley, and. Uh, very it, finding troll skull manor is not difficult it is oh sorry yes silk oh just whenever if we're if we're just walking there i just would, mm -hmm. was wondering if i can hang back and just kind of nudge rocky a little bit sure and just be like hey big man you scared the shit out of me are you doing okay <sighs> yeah uh it was it was weird uh, it's like I was back in the room again. This morning, I thought my brother was was my dad. Uh, thought he was. I thought he was back. I. I don't know. I don't. It was hard, so. It was hard for me to too, Rocky. I don't I don't want to see you like that again. You have to save me, you understand? You can't fall. Well, I'll do what I can, but what am I supposed to do against something like that? Well, you hit it as hard as you can, and when you can't, I will. Yeah, I know you'll be there for me. Also, and I'll help you too. You did, you did think that I was your mother at one point. Really? Yeah. That's. I mean, it makes it a little. That's awkward. embarrassing. <laughs> Considering, yeah, I mean. I'm a tiefling. You're a Goliath. Yeah. Well, that's not. That's not even the weird part, right? <laughs> no, I was trying not to think about it. I've heard of this story called Oedipus. I oh. really don't want to talk about this. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that was so sweet for most of that. <laughs> oh, you know I'm going to Cool. Way to bring it back. Cool. <laughs> Only for you. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, all right, so you all make it to the North Ward. You make it to Trollscombe uh, Alley. And like I said, it's not hard to figure out which of the buildings uh, on this street is Trollscombe Manor. Um, it is very clearly the largest and most standout building uh, on the block. It is four stories tall, has balconies, a turret, five chimneys. Um, it is it is quite the architectural marvel, uh, but it it has fallen into a bit of disrepair. Um, as you all head inside of your newly acquired. Uh, property. Um, you can see that very clearly uh, this, at least at some point, used to be some sort of a tavern uh, because you walk in and you see, um, you walk in and you see what is very clearly a tap room. Um, and hang on a second. Ah, this is Seal's room. Here we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so you walk in uh, to what is clearly a tap room, and uh, excuse me, this tap room is sort of filled with broken furniture, and you can see uh, a few pieces of tarnished silverware, and there are still some some casks of wine uh, that are left behind the bar. But if you go and check them out, you very quickly can just smell that whatever was left in there has long since turned to vinegar, um, and this there's place just sort is of. Dumb. Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, on the outside, like structurally, it's perfectly sound, but inside it has not been well cared for in some time. This place is amazing! This place is beautiful. <laughs> I've never lived in a house before. <laughs> Aw. Um, yeah. Wait, what? 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 Hmm? Uh, 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 well, I, I guess Theron and I are going to be like really excited about all this. And uh, hey, you want to explore? Rowan, Rowan, there may be a ghost. Oh, good! That will be making it even more exciting! <laughs> I know! Wait, no, Volo said there wasn't! Well, oh. <laughs> oh, no. but, but that's Volo! No. That's Volo! No. Maybe it'll come for us. I would just, I would just lean over. Don't, don't crush his dreams. Just quiet. Not a problem. <laughs> right. 
But I mean, wait, and did I, you say you've never been in a house before? I've never lived in a house. I mean, I, I've stayed in inns, I've stayed in temples. Never been inside a house before. <laughs> I, I never, one that, never one with my name on a deed. Never one that, that was given. This I, I, I lived in a crate for a while. Um, but when I came to Waterdeep, I stayed in the temples or in the slums in any place that would have me. But this is this is a place to live. I, a I mean, crate? It just needs, That's it, so sad. Had, I mean, it was a large happen. one. It had enough room for a bedroll and a little lantern hanging from the ceiling. But that was that was in Silvery Moon, and uh, that was up. That was three months ago, so it's it's nothing now. Yeah, that was before he started following us like a puppy. They started following us like a puppy. Mm. You poor thing. But, but this is okay, much well, bigger. Okay, well, I'll say that's right. We've got a house now. Everything is going to be better from here on out, and we still have the whole place to explore and find a ghost. <laughs> well, you and I are the only two that could probably have a ghost because uh, apparently that's right. They can't be punched, and they can't be hit with an axe or scimitars. So. Magic! Magic! <laughs> I would love to take a look around. Magic! Mm -hmm. All right, so you all... Are you, now, here's a question. Are you all uh, taking your look around together or separately? Because it's a, it's a big place. Are there stairs? Mm -hmm. There are stairs. Um, so are from the outside, you slide can on? see... Uh, actually, yes, I think there are. There's That's... a banister. <laughs> I absolutely think there are. It'll take oh, me a while because I'm going to ride that thing a few times. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all of your healing spells are going to go. Yeah, right. Oh, I love uh, it. I'm well, probably going to subconsciously stick with either Syl or Rowan mm -hmm. as we're walking around. Okay. Uh, I, th I think Annie would wander off to the top as high as she could go. Okay. So essentially what you could see from the outside was there were four floors, sort of three main floors, and then there was like a, a, a garret sort of attic area all the way up top. Um, you do very quickly find uh, in the tap room on the first floor that you also have a, a basement, a cellar area that goes down. So actually you have five floors to explore. So Annie is heading all the way to the top. Uh, Rocky is going with her, you said? Uh, with either Syl or Rowan. Oh, with either Syl or Rowan. Okay. So Annie's going to the top. Uh, Syl, where are you headed? Bottom. Okay. Uh, Rowan? Uh, well, I, I think up, uh, but if something, and we're going to do like room by room search unless something catches our, you know, our eye and then we'll just be lined for that. Great. And Theron, how about you? I'm looking for the master bedroom. <laughs> okay. So uh, the master bedroom is up on the third floor. Uh, so you find that pretty easily. Um, just a quick overview of, of what you all see. So on the main floor, like I said, the most of the first floor is, is that tap room that's sort of in, in disrepair. There's a pantry and a kitchen there as well. And then the hatch that leads downstairs to, to the basement. The second floor has a couple of common, big common spaces, a den area, a common room, uh, and a uh, one bedroom is on the second floor. The third floor has another bedroom and then the master bedroom suite with an en suite. Uh, there's also a library study study in that area. Um, yeah. And then the, the attic level has uh, a bedroom actually up there in the attic and some storage space. And it looks like, I'm trying to figure out how you get up to this turret. It looks like you get up there from somewhere on the second floor. Hmm. There's a, a little ladder that leads up into the turret of the building. Um, down in the basement is an ale cellar, a wine cellar, both of which are currently empty. Uh, well, I have some casks in it, but they're all empty. Uh, but that's what you see in this manor house. I think the turret peak is on the third floor. It, I think it is at the level of the third floor, but I think you access it by the top left corner of the second floor. But that is not interesting stuff for our viewers, so we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, basically what you find is that pretty much every room except for the tap room is empty. So this place is uh, set up to be some sort of a tavern, but you all have the run of the place. So some, you know, you definitely can can. Uh, you know, put some money into refurbishing and revitalizing it and reopen it as a tavern run by, by you all um, or myriad other options uh, that you can think about. But let's just really sort of quickly run through what it is that you guys want to do on this first day on your new property. Uh, just sort of quickly going through some of the things that you guys might want to do. Talk to me. Uh, Rowan, Rowan is going to go on like a cleaning spree, like a yeah. ridiculously over the top. Uh, I love it kind of a bit manic about it uh, and probably get exhausted after about four or five hours and sure. then just take a nap. Great. I love that. 
I'll pick up the slack, uh, taking the vinegar and using that to sanitize everything. In between Great. running to any room that has a bed in it and jumping on the bed for a few minutes and then running back. Um, only the master bedroom has any sort of remaining bed and like it's is mine. old and the mattress is kind of moldy. And so like you jump on it and it, it's sort of just like poof. Thud. Yeah. <laughs> and so I in the basement, there are no casks of ale, no wine that is drinking. There are casks there. Most of them are empty. A couple of the casks of wine like might have a little bit left in them. But again, it's all vinegar at this point. Perfect right. cleaning. I, I have a feeling I would just kind of prop up, put my feet up, and just watch them go. All right. Great. <laughs> I think that's about right. Yep. <laughs> Rocky uh, and Annie? Well, I'd offer Rocky. to move any any furniture <laughs> that anyone might have, uh, either from their home or within the, the building. Great. Annie, anything in particular? Uh, so is Theron in the master bedroom? Uh, at least for part of the time, but I think Theron is also helping Rowan sort of disinfect and clean the place, so. Uh, would would the bed master bedroom remind Annie of any, like, style bedroom that she's seen before? I don't think it's quite on the scale of what okay. she might have experience with. I mean, it's definitely nice. I mean, like I said, it's upper middle mm -hmm. class type of area, but I, I don't think it's quite on the scale of what she might be familiar with. Okay, I think she'd also go to the um, library study area mm -hmm. and see if there are any um, dragon chess sets, old dragon chess sets around. Oh, that's a really good question. Make me an intelligence investigation check. Uh, 15. Um, you do actually, you find a, a fairly nice carved uh, dragon chess set. It's missing one piece, um, but that's pretty easily replaceable. Uh, but otherwise it's in, I mean, with a little bit of polish, it's in remarkably good condition. I think she spends most of her time uh, polishing it and getting it looking the best it can. And her next mission is to find that missing piece. <laughs> so maybe that. she's scouring the house too. Like, <laughs> just sees it thinking, like thinking it's in the house and she's like lifting things up. What are you looking for, Annie? Is there anything you need me to keep an eye out for? We need this, uh, this chest is missing a piece. We need it. We need it. No, what's, what's what sort of piece? Uh, what sort of piece? So you, you describe like the match, you show, you show them the, the matching piece from the other the other set, like okay. the other person's set. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it, the same, but a, but a different color. Yeah, this one. <laughs> um, cool. So uh, I think what happens now is that you all spend the next day or so, um, you know, cleaning this place up because it definitely is the work of more than a day to really like clean the cobwebs and the dust and sort of throw out all of the trash and the broken furniture and the detritus in, in the tap room and, and all of that. Um, so I think probably the rest of the day today, cause you got there a little after high sun um, and most of the following day, you all just sort of spend cleaning the place out. Um, you all can, think amongst yourselves and talk with each other about the possibilities for what you want to do, um, which is a conversation that we will probably have offline. Uh, and, uh, but that's sort of how you spend the next two days. Um, at the end of the next day, at the end of the second day, uh, one question I do have, do you all <laughs> think that you have brought in, like, are you all sleeping at Trollskull Manor? Are you going to your homes? Oh, uh, I mean, nap maybe, but yeah, yeah. But like spending the night back at your mm -hmm. homes, right? Okay, and is anyone not doing that? I'm sleeping with it. Okay, great. I love that. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to ask uh, Theron, do you feel safe here alone tonight? I mean, I, I can always set up a tent in the main area. I'm not, I, it, it, there might be a ghost here, and I don't want to face it alone. Uh, I, I think I'll just sleep out in the main area, set up a nice little table for it, the little bedroll under it, some chairs <laughs> piled up, like I used to do when I was younger. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'd feel quite safe here, I believe. Okay. All right. No offense, Darren, places. but I found you getting beat up by people, so... Right, and there are no people in here, so I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> well, just be careful. These old houses can uh, creak and crack on you. Well, for once, I'm not a squatter, so... This hey, is good. that's true. All right, um, so, so the end of this second day then, uh, Ther you all are, are bidding Theron farewell as you all are, are heading out. Um, and just as uh, the four of you are taking your leave, heading out the front door, um, Syl, 
Mm-hmm. You have a very odd experience. Um, you hear a voice mm. and you sort of look around and realize that the voice is in your head. And the voice says, hello, my dear. My name is Vajra Safar, the Blackstaff. Come to Blackstaff Tower in the castle ward first thing in the morning. Bring your friends. And that is where we're going to leave it for this evening. (laughs) Thank you all so much. That was fun. Thank you, everybody who joined us tonight. Uh, Thank you for those of you who uh, gave us ideas for establishments here (laughs) at North Ward that we are going to discover uh, next week, including, I think we're going to have to just go with the ones that were not uh, non-winter specific, although I will make sure and pass those uh, non-winter specific ones around to the other DMs. But Mm. I think we're going to definitely have a Flanders friendly finds. Thank you, Rudblock. And we're also probably going to have a lion in winter. Thank you. Oh, I have to figure it out again. Thank you, Dynakis480. Keys for 80. And yeah, all right, Dan, we'll probably have a winter's gale too. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. This was a ton of fun. Uh, we are going to go around and uh, let you know a little bit about where you can find us, uh, what our favorite moment from the night was. But first, I want to say a huge thank you because I missed this last week. A huge thank you to Variant Rolls and to Dan Gaston for putting all of this together. We really hope that you all who are watching are enjoying, whether live or uh, on the VODs here on Twitch or on our YouTube channel. Um, do subscribe all over the place here on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, chat us up on Twitter as we give you our handles. Let us know what you think. Uh, we are going to be talking about this all week and can't wait to see you all next week. So let's go around and uh, again, say who you are, uh, where we can find you online and what your favorite moment from the night was. We are going to start with Alex. All right. Um, let's see. You can find me at uh, on Twitter at Guard Song. Don't judge me for the name. I was a lifeguard when I made it. Um, or at Instagram at Wolf and Dagger. Uh, favorite moment from the night uh, would have to be, one of them would probably have to be Theron uh, trying to lie, saying that the other three of us are dead. <laughs> yes. I, it was just such a throwaway <laughs> moment that was so wonderful. I love it. Uh, speaking of, Theron, Max. Uh, yeah, I can be found uh, all Max D20 at pretty much any place uh like twitter twitch stream uh on steam uh my favorite part of the night was that little weird thing that happened with our floating grapefruit illusion yeah that was out of nowhere wtf mate i love <laughs> it <laughs> steven since that was your illusion yes uh, yes, I am Stephen Rowe. Uh, I can be found on Twitter at Right Rowe, uh, R-I-T-E-R-O-W-E. Um, and I think my favorite moment of the night was when Rocky kicked the little brain thing like a soccer ball just all the way across the room and then just got stupefied. And, you know, just absolute total props to, to being stupefied. It was amazing. Oh, yes. yes, it was. It was such a solid start to the combat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So fast. That's what made it better. It was that it was, it's, it's that like tragic tragedy where you have to build it up so that you can be brought really low. <laughs> totally, totally. I love it. Well, uh, I guess that means we have to go over to Jonathan next. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Jonathan. You can find me at Red Hand Roleplay uh, on Twitter. Um, it's also our podcast that we put out. We have a new episode tonight. After this, I have to go edit. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, my favorite part of the night. Um, well, I, I've, we've done a really good job of it, and I love the little backstory stuff that mm-hmm. shows up uh, in our group. Um, it's little bits here and there. It'll keep happening, I'm sure, throughout the rest of it. But those are always my favorite. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, it was a good night for that kind of stuff. You guys wrote some some great backstories for me to, to tug on, so well done, everybody. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of interesting backstories that we know nothing about except for confusing and interesting little bits, Allison. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Allison, you can find me also with Red Hand Roleplay on the podcast as well. Um, take a listen. It's pretty good. I have a fun character on there as well. But uh, my favorite moment for tonight, um, other than you you putting in that, I completely had forgotten about it when you were saying it out loud. I know. Uh, the, I was like, yeah, no, I'm good. And then I was like, oh, right. Uh, no, I'm and not the worst, good. <laughs> the worst part was, like, you cut out. So I just got the part, like, he's looking at this. And I was like, oh, oh, yep. Mm-hmm, I got mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually liked it when uh, Annie was like, 
okay, silence a magic user. I didn't think it'd work. I didn't think I'd take them down that quickly. And then it was like, yeah, nope, he's never speaking again. <laughs> so like, you did it. Okay, bro. You did it. <laughs> Fantastic. This with our like uh, HP and stuff, like we were worried about our HP being low and we were going to die and all that stuff. Yeah. But hey, you made second <laughs> level. So now you yeah. have marginally more hit points. Yeah. We're, we're never going to die again. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was kidding. I was kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> Immune to death. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I am Eugenio Vargas, also known as your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, DM Jazzy Hands from the Last Refuge podcast. Uh, I too have to go edit an episode uh, as soon as we're done here, but mine doesn't have to come out until Wednesday. Uh, you can check us out at uh, on Twitter and Instagram at DND Last Refuge, or you can uh, get in touch with me from my personal Twitter at, at Eugenio underscore Vargas. Uh, you can see how that's spelled underneath my picture. Uh, or you can guess and hopefully guess. <laughs> uh, um, check out our podcast. Check out Red Hand Roleplay. Check out all the awesome stuff that we all produce. Drop us a line during the week. We'd love to hear from you. And we hope to see you all and all of your friends next Monday at 7.30 here on Variant Rolls for our next session. Before then, however, uh, we have three more sessions of Dragon Heist this week. Check out the Autumn Crew. They're up next on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, then there are uh, two other crews one on Friday night and one on Saturday afternoon, all right here at twitch.tv slash variant rolls. Thank you all so very much for this evening, and we'll see you next week. Have a good night. Happy gaming, y'all. <laughs>